Hello and welcome to the Ruby Podcast. We are talking about Volume Four, Episode Eleven. Wow, we are almost there. I am the master of my no. fate. I am the master of my fate, the captain of my soul. Mediocrity Four. It's me. High powered, the esteemed moderator of this glorious and amazing podcast. I am a man who is still riding the ridiculous Renora highs of episode 10, but getting really annoyed at all the fucktards who are saying they're gonna die in episode 12. I am dude, what the heck? And things are about to get real. No polyester, it's Saku time. <laughs> That's good. I don't know how many of those you're going to be able to come up with, dude, but they're so good. God but there's a will, there's a way. There's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, All right. right. Anyway. So what did we get this episode? So we got to see Cinder again. That's good. And Salem yeah. and Tyrion. All the waifus. I mean, wait, um, I'll take that back. <laughs> I mean, you know, Tyrion's a crazy husbando. There's people that are into that. I mean, yeah, you know. True. Hey, whatever floats your boat. I ain't gonna kink shame no one. <laughs> yeah. Uh and then we got we got a uh we got Yang busting out the spray paint and painting up. I'll be real honest, it was really good seeing that her bike again. I don't know why. Whenever I saw that bike appear again, I just had a big smile on my face. It felt good. It really did. It did. It did, actually. I did like seeing the the, the, the bike again, for sure. It's a beautiful machine. It is. Uh, we got Weiss with uh, Jock and uh, Ironwood and the butler, whose name escapes me. Klein. 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 Uh, we also got the original son back to also. Where was this son? Yeah, where's this yeah. entire volume? The abs are back in full swing, man. And yeah. Callie noticed. And you can grate cheese on those abs you too. You definitely also. did. I think Callie already did. Oh, he like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got a little bit of Ranger towards the end. And Ren is not having a good time. He wants no, off this not. wild ride of his life. Yeah. <laughs> he, he has lost his zen. Yeah, please stop, Remnant. He'd like to get off. All right. Well, I feel like the best way to do this is just go in order of everything. Yep. So, well, we see Cinder. And the episode opens, that that scene opens up with uh, very familiar fire effects happening in a black screen. And Cinder is fighting off a bunch of Grimm and just murking them instantaneously. But it looks like it requires some uh, some effort and concentration to do what she's doing. Yeah. And also, the, uh, the br I mean, the Brangle, I mean, Harambe is now canon, even though he gets instantly memed the moment he shows up. You could Which say it got uh, incinderated. Oh no! Hey, uh... It keeps happening, man. <laughs> it just keeps happening. This this is why we like you on this podcast. Yes, Sock, yeah. you're amazing. I just want to let you know that. Yeah, Sock's are amazing. Suck. We all love Sock. But yeah, so we got Cinders fighting a bunch of Grim in some part of the castle. Uh, Salem is pulling the, uh, the the strict but fair uh, teacher right now, which is understandable at her point. Yeah, um, she's like, she's just basically like, like, you're just holding back. Try hard. Uh, Tyrion rolls in and he is all hysterical as to, as Get Out, and uh, the voice actor does a really good job at selling that part. I Dude, will Josh so. Growl is amazing. I love Josh Growl. All pra praise, praise Josh Growl. Yeah, this was one of the that was one of those scenes where it's just like, hey, we got this high profile voice actor. Let's just have him go Use ham. Him. Yeah, and he did. They're like, this is what happened. You can do all the voice yourself. Yeah, they just they just let him go nuts. It's like, uh, yeah, 
he's he's uh, I liked him as uh, Devil's a Part Time. For anybody who watched that, he was Satan. That was great, and <laughs> that show's great. Nobody knows it, but it's great. I've read the manga. Yeah, I want season two. I really want season two. Anyway, then uh, uh, Salem Senpai is not pleased with with Tyrion. That's basically yeah. the gist of it, right? Uh, she said uh, something about uh, the like the last eye is still closed or something around those. The lines? last eye is now closed. Which what was the other eye? Was the other eye maybe Raven? It was like is there that... two eyes or is there three eyes? Like I don't Thummer? know. Eight eyes, like a spider. I don't know. Yeah, it yeah, says the last know. eye. Now, if oh, sorry, I have noodles in my mouth. Um, if it would have said third eye, which is what I thought it said the first time I watched it, uh, the third eye is a Hindu tradition thing about uh, psychic powers. Oh, okay. And so the third third eye. So if she would have said the third eye is now closed, it would have basically meant I have no idea what's about to happen. Yeah, it was but a that, little but cryptic. Yeah, but that's not what she said, so I'm kind of at a loss. Yeah, I feel that uh, I'm curious what the other eyes were. In my mind, it's either Raven or Summer, but that's stuff we could talk about later. Yeah, that's... It was still very cryptic, and then she just saunters off. Segways out of the scene. I will say this though. Um, I just want to bring it up. I feel that um, is it her? Is it Cinder's left arm or right arm that's left all arm. buggered? Left I, I want to say that she. Part of me at, at first feel like thoughts like, oh, the way that she was swinging it around, and the way that the clothes were kind of like physics physicsing around her arm. It made me think that like she maybe have lost her arm below the elbow. But now part of me just feels like that her arm is basically useless. Like, it's it's, it's attached to her and it's still there, but it's just a withered husk or something. Yeah, it's just grotesque in nature, and she, like, that's why she has a long sleeve on it, and she can just, she basically, it's like, basically, like, she's just lost all, like, nerves, and she's just swinging around, like, like, loosey-goosey. Yeah, she has yeah, no control of it. It's just there it's, and attached to her. It's there, yeah, it's still there, but it's it's all, it's like, it's it's been Dumbledored, but worse, I think. It's, it's, you know, like, withered and kind of dead, basically, but even more useless, because I think Dumbledore could still use his hand. This is, like, she can't even use the hand part anymore. Now, do you think Cinder's having... Oh, yeah, we can actually talk about this later, but uh, Cinder is definitely having uh, issues using the Maiden's powers. Uh, I have a feeling that getting uh, zapped by the Silver Eye powers probably has something to do with it. That would only make sense since she was having no issues pre previously. Mm -hmm. She was pulling out all sorts of like lava and fire and just crazy shenanigans. Yeah, and going by the volume three commentary, she would that was only the tip of the iceberg of what a maiden can do. Yeah. Which is just kind of a weird uh, it, it hasn't actually come up in the show, um, proper, no, but, we, but, um, according the to the comment, uh, yeah, according to the commentary, maidens can use all the magic. They can do, they can use all the elements, not just a particular one. The maidens are a bit of an issue, though. Well, maybe we'll get into that later, but, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I don't yeah. mind the maidens, it's just we need a little bit more explanation, but, you know, whatever. Right. Well, it's the fact that, like, if we do get explanation on it, it overshadows the main point of the story as this, of being the Silver Eyes. It's like Yeah, and Ruby. Yeah. We only get one or the other, it's basically, it's basically how it is right now. I, I, take, I take Ruby and her Silver Eyes over Maiden BS any day of the week. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 I say this as I want the, Raven, the Bandit Clan to come in and save team ranger though but you know we'll, i'll get into that later so this yeah. this kind of rolls into the uh into the next scene with yang which yang is spray painting her arm and her uh rebuilt gauntlet and she goes into the shed and pulls and then pulls the cover off of uh her motorcycle 
Is the motorcycle actually named Bumblebee? Yes, the motorcycle yes. is named Bumblebee. That is and that, and that was that was announced before we even knew Blake's name. So yeah, we've known that. Yeah, for that yeah that was ever. that was from back like when the yellow trailer first came out. They're like uh they they're answering questions about um like the trailers and like oh yeah the motorcycle's name is Bumblebee. Yeah. Because why not? I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So with Yang. Obviously, Yang's basically ready to go. It, it it seems from this scene though that Ty isn't actually gonna go with her. Yeah, we have to which get into is that. A, which yeah. is an interesting which turn. Which is odd. Yes, I know. We'll have to talk I, about yeah, that because that deserves too. that. I, I wasn't mentioned that too. That deserves and discussion. I, I, like, yeah, I have a theory on that, but yeah, we'll we'll get to that later. And then Ty asks her the question of, uh, yeah, where are you going to well, go? Yeah, where, where are you going to go? This is going to be a really short podcast, then, I can uh, feel it. It is, it is, because yeah. there's not that much to talk about, we know that. Yeah, this was all, we'll this, make this episode we'll, was all set up, but, uh... We'll make up for it next, for next week, though. Next yeah, week's gonna oh, be God. Uh, yeah. And if yeah. Renora kisses, we'll be here for five hours. Just you guys right now. <laughs> if we have a Black Sun kiss, though, I doubt it. Oh, I, doubt it. Oh, I hope so, just for the salt and the tears oh, dude, the salt will be of hilarious. the Bumblebee shippers. Which is, funny because, because, Bumblebee. which is funny because most of us are actually Bumblebee shippers, but none of us are like hardcore Bumblebee shippers. We don't yeah. actually care that much we'd much rather just watch the salt of the two sides fighting than actually really give a shit yeah and, and i'm and uh, for me personally like i'm starting to shift more towards black uh, um, black sun the more i see of sun you know in like when he's being like this i'm like okay i like sun, sun like this yeah that's oh, awesome. sun's, awesome. like this. sun's great you know and especially yeah. with the whole tie back to the uh the, the, the ship episode and he's just like my hero is like oh okay that's yep. a nice little tie-in yep. Like, the more I see of stuff like that, the more I can ship Black Sun. With that little cat face, too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so, so we get that with, with Yang and Tai. And then. And that so, question. Yeah. Then, and then it goes to Weiss, Weiss next, correct? Which is an odd transition because uh, I, I've been talking about this ever since the episode dropped. But uh, there's a thing called editing with intent. or It's called something else, but uh, that's what I'm calling it. Uh, basically, any time in any movie where, like, there's a question asked or a statement made, whatever they cut to is what they're talking about. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't so, do yeah. that here. Yeah, I know, but it's still odd because, like, the scene is actually implying that she wants to go to Atlas, of all places. Yeah, well, that's not going to be a, uh, a sure thing. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, uh, yeah, but... I think people are reading into that too much, personally. Yeah, it's it's reading too much into it, but it's just yeah. this uh, storytelling 101 thing that is just so... Uh, especially with me as a writer. Um, it's so, like, just in my consciousness to see that, even if that is not what they are um, intending... Yeah, you know, like I know, like I know your a style of writing, and I, I see it too in quite a few places. Probably, probably even my own. Uh, like that, the way they did it here implies like freezer burn, but at the same time, but at the same time, we know it's not. Like, yeah. Which, oh my god, if you want to, if you want to talk about freaking uh, ship war, confirm freezer burn and just watch the whole fan base. Oh just my god, get set you on can, fire. I would love it. Oh my god, I would, god, love, it. I would love it. I would love like, this. Like that or monochrome Dude, would just would set the freaking fan base on fire. I would have to go to a movie to a, to a, to a movie theater and buy out their entire entire supply of popcorn for that. That's that's what we would need to be done for that. It would, but it, it, I, if, but I would do it. It would be worth it. If one of those confirmed, the battle would be like it's like oh hey the genocide's happening and then the UN slash NATO armies just sitting across the river with their you know blue helmets and white vehicles just like yeah whatever we're not going to do anything. That's what NATO it's always does. Yeah. It, it, it would what be, UN always yeah. does. It would be the equivalent of the Ewoks kicking the shit out of the stormtroopers and <laughs> returning the Jedi. Oh no, that was a good meme. Yeah, but yeah, so with Weiss's part, she's she's doing the whole like Ocean Seven sneaking out of the place, and Klein's yeah. also really short. 
Yeah, well, like, we, like we should have really known short. that. We should have known he was going to be short since because of what yeah, he's dwarf. Yeah, and well, it's, it's not the really it's not the first. Well, no, it's not the first time that they've stood uh, like next to each other to see that. But uh, the night before this episode came out, we were all talking about like uh, character heights. <laughs> so then that was just like on our mind, and like <laughs> Clyde is like four foot ten. <laughs> Yeah, and he has like the uh, well, he actually has like a if you if you've ever played World of Warcraft, uh, the male dwarves, he kind of has like their kind of like uh, walk build. Yeah, that yeah. walk cycle. Yeah, Don't... he has their walk cycle, and why is this freaking trying to sneak out with high heels and it's driving me nuts? Oh click, yeah, click, 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 yeah, click. the first two steps, I was like, what is she doing? God damn it! Why is she still wearing those heels? God, that, that is like, like sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. No, that is you, even you worse. Wear, as Simpsons has taught us. You wear sneakers for sneaking, okay? You do not wear high heels for sneaking. Okay? I was going to say, that sound of her walking around is as bad as, like, you know, if you try to quietly, like, pull apart Velcro. And the way that you quietly pull apart Velcro is you grab the Velcro and you yell as you're pulling the Velcro so no one hears you pulling the Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that, that scene... uh. Yeah, she's she's making her great escape, uh, which takes us to Menagerie with Blake. Oh no, no, no! We missed some very oh. important parts. We missed yeah. uh, the conversation. Uh, oh, the conversation. oh yeah, I, I, yeah, Daddy. Ironwood, Ironwood, and Jacques. Which we actually did learn some good information about that too. Also, uh, the yeah, biggest no, thing we learn good. is that uh, Winter has been in uh, Mistral for basically a month. Yeah, and she's already, like, getting information. She's doing things. Oh, that, that whole line of the daughter you, of, you stole from me, part of me feels like, oh, man, is Winter Ironwood squeeze on the side whenever he's not, um, <laughs> he, whenever he's not taking care of, um, of, uh, Glinda. Glinda. Christmas wow. cake queen. Well, uh, I, I've, been, I see it. I've been saying I it for it. <laughs> I've been saying it for a very long time that, uh, Winter is to Ironwood what Glinda is to Ozpin. You're supposed to so, pay attention. So sir. winter, so winter is the one who has to clean up Ironwood's mess when he's done with Glinda. Oh, that's she's the, sad. she's the one. She's the one he has cleaned the deck, so to speak. <laughs> she can make Aww. him stand at attention. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> that's some, that's, some that's my stuff here. right there. God damn it! Oh well, I mean, she has to be strong enough to withstand his twinling hydraulic penises, though. So, like... <laughs> well, we all we all know we all know that Winter's like asexual, right? Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I just but, made that okay. Up. So, so but I would not I would no, not no. be surprised. So basically, Ironwood is asserting his dominance. And as he has like, been basically all season. As sure. he has been the entire season, and he's basically deciding to build a wall around um around uh the Atlas Kingdom, which for what's going on right now, actually, in all honesty, isn't a bad idea is to close ranks and uh and consolidate assets. Man, and and we're, Shock we're, isn't too happy we're, about uh, that. And here's, we're and here's still talking about Ruby, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Make Atlas safe again. Yeah, here's the thing. I know, I know we're, I know we're guys here, and and you know people can have waifu wars and all that stuff. But I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that Ironwood is number one husbando, right? Is that? Oh, I've pretty... seen plenty of Robo Daddy comments. I'm yes, pretty yes. sure we're all. It's very. He's he's just you know. It, it's it, it's like him and Ren. Yeah, that's actually yeah. Him and Ren are really that's and number Hazel. one, and number two right now. Yeah, I've actually yeah, met a few only days. for you, high powered. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still say people either rent sexuals or they just, you know, they they want the iron. The rent iron. sexuals or, or robo daddies. Yeah, or robo the iron wood. Yeah. But yeah, we learned that, and uh, and 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 I like how um Jock seems to be upset about uh winter because I guess he had a lot of uh he probably had a lot of um stock put in her. Exactly, that was the word I was looking for. I was going to say faith, but then you you gave me a better word. Thank you. Um. And so we learned that. I also like how um, Weiss puts the freaking gravity root on the uh, door, and uh, which makes absolutely no goddamn sense. I also like how that. um, I also like how uh, Ironwood freaking just busts uh, Jock's desk. Yeah, that was great. 
You know, I wanted him to put a line there. It's like, you know how expensive this desk was? Mahogany. Uh, mahogany. Mahogany. <laughs> and then, so, and that basically happens. I mean, we did learn some good stuff, though. Uh, I'm kind of worried now that Winter is, like, Atlas's equivalent of Pyrrha right now. Oh, and I no. feel very, I feel very worried about her safety in the future. Because especially if the White Fang's attacking and they have the opportunity to, especially since Adam's going to be leading that branch of the oh. White Fang, and if they have the opportunity Ooh, I see to kill, with this. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. that's, well, that's, that's, that's the first yeah. thing that came yeah. to mind. I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about yeah. that later, but but I just want to make this this fear known because I really like Winter. I don't think I've made that known, but I do. Yeah, but uh, the the next scene is with Blake and Son. Okay, where has Sun been? We actually got our son back from the um, episode. Uh, I, okay, when you first asked that, I really wanted to say in Blake's pants. And then I was like, I was, wait, no, Callie's Callie pants. Was, yeah, Callie's, Callie's pants. pants, dude. What are you but talking about? That's where the about? sun doesn't shine. <laughs> oh, please stop. <laughs> Sock's gonna I, kill I, us. Yeah, I feel like you're trying too hard at I this need point. To, I need to keep, I need to keep on drinking. <laughs> I got a case of Lone Star I need to work and, through. And, and again, though, I, I'm surprised to say it, but I think for at least the second time, the best scene in an episode is the Blake scene. And I'm confused by that when you think of the beginning of this season. <laughs> and, our, and our qualms with, with Blake. Okay, I'll, I'll state this for the record. I have now officially warmed back up to Blake. Blake is no longer a shitty kitty. And no, I'm warming back up to her, too. I am and and well, I yeah. was gonna say, didn't in like part four, in, in like one of our first podcasts we did, I think one of us floated the idea that Blake may want to try to like ring back, like wrangle the White Fang back into her control or you know control of like gear or whatever. I don't know. Was that you, high powered? I think that yeah. might have been you. I yeah. think yeah. I think I mentioned something like that, or it might have been it, during yeah, the, it the been episode. CJ. Yeah, I think it probably was CJ. Who mentioned it? But uh, I want to say it was it was the episode four podcast or the episode five podcast or so where someone floated the. It idea was probably that. the episode five podcast because that was yeah. the first one that we had where we talked about Blake. Yeah. And so extensively. Also, um, I don't care what anyone says. Black Sun is now officially confirmed. If you disagree with me, then uh, just flame me in the comment sections because I honestly don't care. I disagree, but it's really close. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing as what I said about Renora last time we talked about that. So it's yeah. it's basically in the same spot as that. We're at like ninety percent. Yeah, we'll still get into that, obviously. But it's like in the dating sim where it's like, okay, I can I can H scene this chick, but I'm not one hundred percent there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, yeah, so... one, one, one thing's for sure. One way or another, Sun's getting some pussy. Oh, he, he's, he's, already, he's already got it with Bella Mama, though. But, oh, uh, my goodness. But, uh, she made that scene for me, honestly. All, yeah, the freaking cougar jo- all the cougar jokes that have come out of this volume have just she, been she, she, a delight. That's the reason why she interrupted them. She did not want Sun to cheat on her. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she wanted to join in if they did do something. Well, but okay, but first you want. That sounds like something from one of my hentai's. (laughs) (laughs) Hentai. There's probably several hentai's that have done that. And if he was going to cheat on her, she wanted to at least be part of it. Okay, that's what it was. Oh, but yeah. So that it it was like in no joke. Like in all seriousness, this was a very good scene. Like, son put the hammer down on Blake, and it was like, no, I'm sick and tired of your bullshit. Yeah, because it's not your it's not your call to make if we're trying to help you. It's not your call. And I like how he talks about uh, oh man, my voice cracked there too. Also, that's bad. I need a drink. I wasn't it, gonna but, um, say anything, dude. I was not gonna say anything. You didn't have to mention it. But uh, I like how he mentions that Yang would do the same. Yes, I like that too. I, yeah, that's a little on the nose for um, fan service reasons. It but is uh, on the nose, but with how dense Blake is, you need to be extremely blunt with him. Yeah, that's, that's the way I'm looking across. at it. I, I think he's just being a, like trying to be a good friend about it, to be honest. Well, yeah, that and I think it's probably just uh, referencing the fact of what happened to Yang, because like 
Yeah. Yeah, that's another yeah. big point too. Also, Yang was also hurt. kudos on the writers um, for uh, um, making Blake appropriately stupid in this yes. episode. Like, yes. like it, it worked. It, it, it worked. What, what they were trying to do, and what I was getting mad at them for in uh, episode three, um, it, it worked. It, it panned out. Honestly, I it, okay, we'll have to get into this more, but they've done. I forgive them completely for Blake after this episode for how stupid she's been. We had to wait a bit for the payoff. Yes, and I'm okay with that. And I said I would be okay with it. Yes, and if CJ is listening, Blake is now cool. Yep, Blake. Yep, yep. CJ can CJ can uh, run around and take all the credit he wants. Yeah, and also too, I like how Blake wants to take back the White Fang because then this will also put her in more positions to where she will have to confront her issue with oh, people get hurt because of the stuff that I do. So she'll have to face that demon multiple times and get used to it. No. Yeah. And uh, we also learned that. Uh, God, that face of gear or whatever Bella Mama fell through the door. He's like, God damn it, who did I marry? <laughs> a female son. Oh. And then so Gear is like, Yeah, it looks like the Adam's gonna t- do a coup of the White Fang and take over. Yeah, we thought it was gonna be a coup, but like against Gira. Like, also, also or- I want to point out, I think I was we can confirm that I was right and that Adam was not on on Menagerie. Yeah, we still have an episode to go. We still have an episode to go. Leave me alone. I'm pretty positive I was right about that the entire time. I, I'm f- yeah, I'm at this point now where I'm like, yeah, Adam and Sienna Khan are not on the same page. I, I don't know if Sienna Khan is still alive as, after Hazel got done talking to him. I don't know if Sienna Khan's a guy or a girl. Yeah, that's what I said, or her. <laughs> they freaking, and, uh, they freaking uh, kill Sienna off screen and just, we never find out. Uh-huh. <laughs> it just is, never, it's just, we it, never find out their gender. It's just never brought up again, ever. It's just like, whatever. That person's dead. And so here's the thing, like, uh, it, I could talk about this later too also, but uh, I definitely like the drive and motivation now that, we've, that we're seeing out of Blake. And, and Blake's storyline potentially has as much importance as the Ranger storyline now. Like her plot importance is like second place now. It Cause, is because yep, yep. what her because what she does ha- can easily affect all of the other characters. Yeah, because I mean, for the Chaos Syndicate, are, are we still calling them that? Uh, like the White Thing are a pretty important piece, so her being involved in all of that can help immensely. I, yeah, we can again. We can get into this more later because this is stuff that's more analytical kind of shit. Yeah. Me, do you have anything to add? Uh, not not until we go back over this scene with yeah, the fine-tooth we... comb. All yeah. right. And then the last part's real simple. There's a lot of running, and then Ren uh, is like, oh, no, it's happening again. Yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of no. Yeah, a lot of no. No! It's, it's, come, yeah, yeah, it's, it's literally come full circle now for Ren. Yeah. And, so. uh, I, I like how the uh, I'm, was the Nuclava even given a, like an actual name? Mm, not yet. Uh, by the, the, name by the subtitle name. guy, the subtitle guy gave them a, uh, a name. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but you can anybody can make those subtitles. I know that's why I was making a joke. Yeah, I know it's not official, basically. But yeah, yeah so, so I mean, so we still Nuklave... we still yeah we still don't have an uh, a canon name for the Sea Dragon from the beginning of this volume. That's also mm. true. Oh really? Yeah. Shit. To know that. Oh, oh. Also, one thing we forgot to bring up. Um, Ironwood mentions a name, uh, Leo, which it's a safe assumption that that's the name of the headmaster of Mistral Haven's Academy. Haven. Haven. Yes. Yeah, the headmaster of Haven. There you go. Thanks, media. Yeah, You're the which best. Which would make it the cowardly lion that we've been looking for. We kind of previously thought would have been Taye. But yes, and so now back to Ranger. Uh, it's it's all coming full circle for Ren in both the literal and figurative sen- sense. I also really like how uh, the new Clave just has a bunch of arrows and spears just in its back. 
acupressure. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I, we're pretty much done talking about all that stuff. So now we're going to get into all the crazy theorizing part. Which well, this will probably more, be yeah, the, yeah, more the analytical parts. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna each pick of each we're scene. gonna all right. So let's we we'll, we could basically just roll back and just go through it in the same order. Uh, so how how messed up is Cinder? I I want everyone to give me their opinion on how badly hurt Cinder actually is. Okay, are we going from top to bottom again for that? We're doing so top to track. bottom. All yes. right. I think, I think oh, it's tough to tell because she looks physically exhausted by by what she's doing more so than she probably should be. But I can't understand why that would be the case. Honestly, I I, I don't know what would make her physically exhausted by all of this. I think that's more what I think it is. Is yeah, her left arm's kind of fucked up. I'm definitely with you on that high power. That her left arm's fucked up. Uh, it's there, but like I said, it's it's like ultra double door. It's it's basically, it's basically useless. useless. It's basically useless, but it's there. She can use it to cast spells, but she's definitely done with her previous weapons. She's not going to be able to use her awesome double bow thingy anymore. That's sad. I really like that. I know that weapon was concept. one of the definitely one of the coolest weapons in the show, no question at all. Um, if I ever made an OC, that was like I was going to basically steal that weapon and modify it a little. That's how much I like that weapon. But I haven't because I don't make OCs. But anyway, um, I think it's more mental, honestly. I think she's still really fucked up from what Ruby did to her because I think the general consensus from most people at this point is that they had a real fight. And Ruby yeah. doesn't remember it, but there was a real fight and Ruby definitely beat the ever-loving shit out of her. Oh, so, shit. yeah, so she's still reeling from that and she's scared because... You could say, like, okay, it's just the beginning of her maiden powers, but that was just the beginning of Ruby's silver eye powers. So, either way, she thought getting the maiden powers would make her basically invincible, and it really sure as shit did not. And yeah, she proved, like, yeah, she proved it to herself by offing Ospin and Pyrrha, and then this 15... Right after that, Then this 15-year-old girl, girl... It's like first With an impractical game. weapon... Yeah. online and you like body the first two people and then you run into like someone who actually knows how to play and they just yeah, body exactly. you back they body you way the fuck back yeah uh, so i i have a couple analogies for it when it gets yes. to me but so yeah that's, so that's why i think it's mostly mental and you know now that she has this pressure on her she's feeling the pressure more from salem now because she lost that confidence in the first place and salem pressuring her is just making things even worse and then, you know, seeing things like how just fucking psycho Tyrion is, is just all that is playing into her head, I think. Oh, I love Tyrion in this I love Tyrion in this episode. It was yeah, so I, good. Everything so was good. on point. Yeah. We'll talk about that too, but that, yeah. I I, I, I think it's mostly mental for Cinder, despite her injuries. I, I think it's it's the mental stuff. Same thing with, basically what happened with, like, what happened with Yang. It's mostly mental. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so for me, whenever it comes to it, I, I, I'm... As I stated earlier, I think her arm is basically just... It's there, but it's pretty much useless. Uh, yeah, that's basically about it. Um, I actually thought of something recently. Uh, thought of something whenever you're talking about it, dude, is uh, maybe in the 12th episode, if the bad guys show up, you could potentially get... Uh, I believe this is one of the first things I talked about in the um, in the podcast was I want there to be like a flashback scene between cinder and ruby fighting i would love we, that so if we much. get that that would be amazing because i'm in the camp that there was that i'm in the camp and there's quite a few other people in the camp that are like okay yeah there was an actual fight and it's like the shitty anime trope of oh i went berserk and i and i did a lot of cool stuff but i don't remember what i did so yeah but that's basically it for me. I mean, dude basically said pretty much what I was going to say. Uh, definitely Cinder's under a lot of stress to perform. And uh, let's say that uh, Ruby doing what she did to her was uh, gave her a, a, a reality check. Or no, curbed her enthusiasm is the better word for it. Yes. All right, media, it's your turn. 
Oh, where to begin with this? Okay, so... Assuming that there was a fight, which I think would be awesome, um... It, it's not so much... It, it is, um... That Ruby just was completely OP, overpowered her. Um... Almost like, uh, in, uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, when Ren get or... Yeah, Rey. When Rey gets Rey. a hold of <laughs> the lightsaber yeah. and just fucks Kylo Ren up with yeah, it. Yeah, that scene was so goddamn good, dude. Yeah, like, Kylo Ren, this person who's trained all his life to be the, like, pinnacle of badassery, and then he just gets annihilated by this person who... This is the first time she's actually held a lightsaber. Like, uh, like that level. Like, that's, that's the fight. And... So yeah, there's a lot of physical stuff to it. Um, for instance, like uh, we know that the silver eye powers can turn Grim to stone, and that it also has an adverse effect on the maiden powers. That's why Salem like wasn't really surprised that Cinder got hurt. Um, so uh, and I know Sok will get this, but in Naruto, there's a character named Orochimaru, who prides himself on uh, the techniques he learns, and he goes up against uh, the village leader, the third Hokage. And gets part of his soul ripped out. And when that happens, his arms turn to stone. And he's unable to use all these techniques he's picked up. And so he's basically useless from there. I, I think something sim I think the Silver Eye Powers might have a similar effect on uh, Cinder. Ooh. That's, that's a nice thought, dude. The the Reaper Death Seal. Which goes with yeah. High Powers um, theory that uh, it's, it's like a... Uh, like a Grim Reaper thing. And that's going all the way back to freaking Facebook chat whenever I came up with that yes. idea. That <laughs> yes. the aspect of death. But yeah, I was going to say that the, uh, the Silver Eye powers might have cooked the, uh, the Bug Grim. That is assuming that it's like a part of her now and not like just like a one-time consumable item that the glove was. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, that's the way you're... That's kind of, I, I, and I want to say there's a few people on the Facebook group that uh, share that sentiment. Also, memory serves. But yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking now and let the media finish. Uh, and so like right now, Cinder, and, and this goes to like what Salem said in this episode. Like Cinder wanted to be strong. She wanted to be powerful. She's basically a Sith. Like she's basically a Sith apprentice. She was tempted by the dark side. Because power, and now she's really deep into that, and she learned that she's not so, she's not as hot as she thought she was, and so, again, like, what Dude was saying with, like, there's a lot of similarities with Yang, where it's just like, a, a, a wise man once said that 90% of the game is, is half mental. Uh, he was talking about baseball, but this certainly applies to where Cinder's at right now, or at least what I think Cinder is at. I'll, I'll add something whenever Sock, whenever everyone finishes up for this part, because uh, a fear that I had was uh, squashed with this episode, and I'll make it known with Cinder. Yeah, but th yeah, that's that's all I had to say. Um, yeah, a lot of it's mental, but a lot of it's physical, and the physical parts just make the mental parts even worse. Alright, so high powers up. No, it's Sock's turn. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> just bring it in at the end. Okay, gotcha. Uh no, um like pretty much everyone's pretty much said uh, about the same lines I was thinking. Um but like I we like the, we have to consider the fact we don't know how long she's been there fighting those Grim because they they literally live on Grim spawning grounds, so they could just be forever and ever and ever. And it's just like we don't know how long she's been going on. True, for all we know, she's uh, she um, is doing the Ruby Grim Eclipse Horde mode and is on, like, wave 10. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's also, like, Only she doesn't have robots to do, like, like, the earlier, like, part of that. Uh-oh. What? Huh? Oh, okay, my computer's acting up. Oh. Okay. Wait, no, I think it's good. Actually, I'm gonna hop out and then hop back in. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, we'll so we'll we'll then. we'll carry on without you for a few minutes, but uh, yeah. Uh, man. Yeah. Uh, like that. Just not without. Just without the robots, we don't know how long she's been going. And but I mean, I, I do I, agree I, with everything yeah. you guys have been saying that it's pretty much like 
it's she's just shaken. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, let's let's we'll see. Depending on how long he takes, let's move on to the next topic, and then uh, if he wants to, he can bring it back. Uh, Tyrion. When, yeah, uh, yeah Tyrion, Tyrion comes in. Which I mean, for Tyrion, we didn't learn more about him. It's just confirmation of of his personality type or his character archetype or whatever you want to call it that he is definitely the um he's definitely the zealot uh, the zealot type character which i love uh, and i think media has, has said that as well that that's definitely better than just the being crazy for crazy's sake type of character i'm glad that's not the way they went with him and I I just I'm loving I'm loving how Josh Grell just knocks this completely out of the park. Uh, yeah. I thought the voice acting was on point. Uh, I think media may have said something along the lines of maybe it went on a little bit too long and they might have been milking it a little bit too much, which I could agree with. I think they were just really excited at the fact that they got a badass voice actor <laughs> <laughs> to just fucking do his thing and and that's kind of they just went over maybe a little bit overboard with that, but. Yeah, it gets uh, to a point was... where you gets to a point where you where you where you start feeling bad for the grim that becomes an issue. Yeah, I think, but I guess what I like is just that they're showing that they're able to do some of those more. Um, I want to say like dramatic esque kind of scenes and and be able to do them decently and 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 this scene kind of the fact that they have voice actors that can pull something like this off and just do something where you go from you know crying to laughing creepily and all that kind of thing it's that's kind of cool i i just like that they're able to do that now all right cool okay i'm back so i think everything's kosher now sorry about that yeah we were just talking about a Tyrion and him going ham on that beowulf yeah that was a good little scene right there i really liked it hashtag grim lives matter yeah exactly But okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a fear that has been um, squashed that I had, and I want to say I made reference to this in another podcast. So there's two videos on YouTube that are really good because they make very good points for this crazy Sunny D theory. And so one is by the geek theorist called Cinderfall is not evil Ru- Ruby theory, and then there's another one from What is wrong with Cinderfall? Uh, by Reach Commander uh, Kent Parker. And so, the basically, the whole the, the whole big theory behind, or the whole plot synopsis basically is, is that whenever Ruby unleashed her silver eye powers, it pushed um, Cinder's soul, it like, it, it the best. Cinder's soul was put in a box inside Cinder, and then Hera's soul was blasted into Cinder. Oh, and so the thought oh, process. Oh was, yeah. Was, uh, yeah, no, come uh, on. And so, uh, no. and so, yeah, yeah, and so, like, okay, well, I, I, whenever I saw these videos, I'm like, okay, this is a crazy theory, but you're like at least making a very sound and reasonable argument with it, and so. That's why I gave it some credence, even though I didn't want it to happen. And from this episode, what I've seen is that's not the case, which I'm glad. Which, you know, if that sort of thing was done right, it'd be kind of interesting, but I, I would rather that not to happen. So yeah. The whole kerfuffle with that is, like, why would she even ask about Ruby and, like, ask the Salem's crew to take care of her? Yeah, it's very easy to torpedo this theory and or hit it with 16-inch high explosive and or armor-piercing shells. But the guy made, but there's very good arguments made for it, so... I'll have to check it out. Yeah, so I would recommend watching those videos, even though they're basically hyper-debunked now. But at the time when those videos came out, they have made very good points. So I'm going to get off that tangent for now. Yeah, yeah that, that would just say... be... I would think that that would be a really dumb move for them, uh, and I yeah, know I know a lot of people on uh, Facebook, especially, were uh, when this episode title was announced, uh, taking control. Uh, there were 
and the the screenshot was of Cinder, and they're like, "Oh, Pierre's gonna take control over Cinder's body." Like, th- this was this was on a, a lot of stuff. Like, uh, I think there was also people on Amino. There's probably people on Amino talking about it too, um, and just no, that would be that would be a really weird, dumb thing to do. Arcos 2.0. So, uh, same thing as if um, like Pira is somehow trapped inside Ruby. Like, just, Pira's dead, get over it, um, yeah. move on to As bigger, before, move on to bigger, better, more rose-flavored things. The most I'd want from, from Pira is, like, Jedi Ghost Pira. That is as far as I'll go. Yeah, Pira being back back is sort of one of my conditions for not watching the show anymore, to be honest. I got a few of those conditions, and that's, that's one of them. It's not the strongest condition, but it's one of them. I, I don't know. I think, I think I'm too invested in the show for something that stupid to completely throw me out of it. Uh, I'd, I'd start hating it a lot more, but... Uh, <laughs> well, that's yeah. kind of why it's like, what I'd rather watch the show and hate it or just, you know, give up. That's... Yeah, but, anyway. but uh, yeah, my, the only way that I would stop watching the show is if they stop uh, improving. Yeah, I'm on the. I'm on the. I think the 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 Ghost Jedi Pier thing. I would be slightly. That I'm not. I don't have a problem with that one as much. It's just the uh, these other versions that people have, like where she comes back in a much more tangible way, where it's like, no, thank you. That's just no, very no. So now we can roll into uh, Yang's little bit there, which. I feel we got a, a reasonable chunk to talk about. Um, there's really yeah. two things. Is so okay. So I want two two group consensus here. So is Yang going to go after go for go to Ruby, or is she going to go find her mom? Also, why isn't from what it sounds like Ty isn't going to join in on the adventure? Also, so, so you want to ask why? Okay, all right, so. I think Sock and I already discussed this, and I think Sock and I are going to say the same thing. So do we want to go in reverse so he can say it instead of me? Because I always get to say the shit, and then he's always got to say, like, uh, I disagree. Yeah, Sock, you go first. How about we let's go reverse order this time? Exactly. Oh, wow, roll reversal. Hello. What are we talking about? <laughs> Where's Yang going? And what's Ty do? What's Ty going to do? And why is Ty not going with them? Why does, why does Ty seem to not be going with that is actually a good question. Uh, I <laughs> I would think Ty would like to go. Like, I don't know why he wouldn't, like, take care of the house. I don't know. There's really nothing there. Uh, I, I bet her best bet would literally just be going to, like, Mistral to uh, see Ruby. Because if our thing's right with Raven being there in Mistral, then that would be two birds with one stone. And Crow's there, too, so hey, yeah, the number's right. Ha. Uh, anyway, uh, so I think it doesn't really matter which one she's going for. She's going to get the other one. She will find her treasure, but it will not be the treasure she seeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Getting, so much oh my getting. Goodness. Yeah, I love that movie. Um, so, as for Ty... I think Ty wants Yang to choose, but regardless of what Yang's doing, he's going to go after Ruby. You actually make a pretty good point there, Media. Like, he wants to go after Ruby, but he knows that Yang might prefer to go after Raven. And if that's the case, then he's he, he don't fuck with that bitch no more. <laughs> <laughs> As he goes back to the tree where where Yang might have been conceived. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you remember that. Yeah, uh, that joke's great. Uh, but uh, uh, are you done media with yours? Uh, yeah, I think that yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah. Although I'll, I'll although, although there is a slight possibility, even though they didn't even really hint at it this scene, it, it never stopped them before. But she might actually be going after Blake. That actually, you know what? That'd be a curveball. That would actually be that a That would be a curveball. crazy curveball. 
I would like that. Um, like, literally comes in and helps him with the white thing fight. Like, oh, that would actually be amazing. Because, because uh, the writers, especially Miles, wants to appease shippers, but doesn't know how to properly hint at them. So he's just like, ah, just got give them moments and have them talk about each other. That that. Yeah, and uh, I'll get to this with uh, Blake's scene, but they actually did show uh, quite a, a considerable amount of restraint with uh, one scene in particular. And, I, and the more I'm thinking about it, media, it, it just sounds right, because, like, if uh, Weiss is going to Mistral for winter, and that whole, like, it's like, that would be, you know, that would be... Even I'm pretty sure it's spring together. right now. Go on. <sighs> <laughs> is this what it's like? Yes. <laughs> Son of a succubus. <laughs> is it uh, is it high power's turn or is it my turn? Oh, it's my turn. Okay, it's high power's turn. But yeah, so where I'm at right now is uh, media makes a very fair point. Like, oh, you know, Yang will go, and then Ty might give it a day or two, and he's like, okay, time to go find Ruby. As he goes and grabs his weapons and, you know, goes off to find. Um, I, I like the idea that Yang might actually go after Blake. That would actually be a very Yang thing to do in the grand scheme of things. You can't run from me. Uh, I feel that if she does go to find Ruby, bringing up what Media says, you know... Uh, or to me, it's it's the uh, it's the taco commercial with the little Hispanic girl, oh, and God. she's like, and then and she's like, why not both? That's, <laughs> that's what it feels. That's what it feels like for me. Is it's I, I I wouldn't be surprised if Yang goes to Mistral. Raven realizes that she's in Mistral because a reasonable assumption that Raven keeps tabs on tag tabs on Yang. And probably out of guilt and other weird feelings, motherly instincts that she doesn't realize that she has or been trying to go, goes to meet up with Yang. And then stuff happens between the two of them. I kind of hope they fight. Part oh of me my god, wants, I, I want that. Oh, they're I definitely want. gonna fight. They're definitely Part of me fight. wants Yang to just blow off Raven. Like, Yang will get the information she needs from Raven, and then after that she's like, I'm done with you. That'd be cool too. Like, like Yang's just like, why did you leave? And she gets the answer of why, and then she's like, okay, well, now I know. I'm done with you. I wash my hands of you. Little hand. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. Part of me feels like, yeah, if she goes to Mistral to find Ruby, she's going to get Raven and, you know, vice versa. So I'm in the, I'm in the category of uh, why not both. Yeah, I think, okay, so what, the thing that Sock and I were talking about earlier, today, or, you know, yesterday, I think it was, was that it seemed, I think it was Sock and I, maybe it was somebody else, I don't remember. I don't know, you can say it first before I can say, tell you if it was me or not. Either way, the thing was that it seemed that uh, the way that questioning with Ty went was that it seemed like she was originally probably going to go to find her mom, and after being questioned like that, there's a good chance she'll probably go try to find Ruby. Uh, but either way, I think I'm in the same kind of camp that High Part is. Just that they're all gonna sort of end up in the same place anyway. Uh, we with the point of this ep, a lot of part of the I think really the main point of this episode, and and the reason why the Y scene you know was the way it was and everything is and the why even part of the Blake scene is they're just confirming that everybody's now going to Mistral. That's what's happening, is that all the other three girls are going to Mistral. So it doesn't really matter if we know exactly who she's going after. It's not that important. She's Either way, it's, we're pretty sure she's going to Mistral, that, or, or at least that area. And that's they're, they're not staying – she's not going to stay on her continent. She's going to, to, to the Mistral area or whatever, and that's, that's the important part. That's where yeah, everybody's good going. Point. Good point. Very good point. And, and, and Ty – um, I think, as usual, Media knows more about this than anybody else does, and he makes the best point. But before Media's point, I would have said, I have no fucking idea why it seems that Ty's not going with her. 
And then media basically answered it by, he's probably just going to go after Ruby either way by, on his own and let Yang do what she wants because she's an adult. She's 18. She can make her own damn decisions. I am an adult. Yeah, she can make her own damn decisions. You I can't can buy alcohol and participate in pornography and vote. Fear except, me. Except for the buying alcohol part. We don't know what the yeah, drinking we, yeah, we don't is. Know. That's true. I mean, it should be 18. Whatever. Either way, I think I think media's got a really good chance of being right with he's going to go either way, and they're all going to end up in the same spot eventually. That's sort of what's being applied implied heavily anyway, so... Volume 5 is going to be hype. Yeah. We is. might actually get Volume 5 a little bit sooner than expected to also, so they said Why? fall. They said well, fall. They... Yeah, it's still... Hopefully it's though. early fall. I hope so, too. Maybe they realize their mistake, and maybe we shouldn't do the season during, like, whatever Thanksgiving and Christmas all happen in that same time frame. But, you know, whatever, that's just me. So this rolls into uh, Weiss's part. So, uh... All right, can I ask a question about this? Did anybody yes. besides me think that this scene dragged on too long? No, you weren't alone. Just a little bit. There's Maybe. a lot of superfluous details in the scene. Right? Okay, thank you. That's what I thought. I, there's I, a lot of hallway walking. Yeah, there's way too much hall. I, I understand they're trying to make it look, like, dramatic and sneaky, but, like, really, the only thing we got out of this long-as-fuck scene, comparatively to everything else, uh, compared to last episode, really, was that she learned that winter is in mistral so she's going to go to mistral which in fairness is very important like i said the basically the theme but the point did, of this did episode she, is that... did did she learn that this episode though because Klein, just, okay, because Klein, yeah know. because Klein was, Klein was already like uh the the whatever's ready to take you to mistral you can meet up with winter there she'll be the only family you have after tonight, yeah. which is a line that makes no sense. He's like, okay, what about the mother? But apparently, the mother doesn't actually exist. She's non diegetic at this point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's still in the garden drinking. Yeah, that's, that's, she'll always just be in the I'll garden be, drinking. I'll be real honest, though. It seems reasonable that either Klein or Weiss has an idea of Winter's whereabouts, it just hasn't been shown. Yeah, but basically, so the, the only extra stuff was we, as the audience then, got confirmation that that Winter is in Mistral. That's where Weiss is going. She's not going back to Patcher or or or, um, or uh, fucking Vale to look for people. She's going to Mistral. And uh, Iron Daddy is fucking laying down the law. Jacques is not happy. Yeah, and, and... That, that's... Although I love that scene... A lot of it is just restated from uh, episode two of this volume. Yeah, exactly. Iron Daddy was already laying down the law. The The fact that Alice is closing its borders, it's interesting. And it's definitely one of the things that I'm calling that Facebook is going to analyze way too much for no good reason. And again, miss the point of the episode, which is what they do every week. Um, but that's definitely one of the things I think they're going to overanalyze for no good reason. There's always something they, they latch on to. I think that'll be one of them. Um, but... Otherwise, as much as I've been loving Weiss this volume, I feel like this scene was, it's just, it's overdone, and we didn't need that much. It was, why couldn't we have gotten some more Ranger or some shit instead? Like, uh, obviously the real reason why she was sneaking around in high heels is because that's the only shoes her character model has. <laughs> oh, it's the truth. <laughs> it's, I mean, that is the truth, that's why it's so goddamn funny. But that doesn't excuse, why did she use that glyph on the door? Yeah, that was so not, weird. And why did she well, stand I mean, there for so long after she put it on there? I, not, I can understand putting it on there because but... Ironwood was about to come out, and she was still there, and she didn't want him to see her. But she stood there for like a good five seconds, just like, there. Yeah, for me, in my mind, it's Weiss wanted to el eliminate as many potential variables to her escape as possible. Um, which, in all reality, like, Ironwood could open doors, she could just held her finger above her mouth, and Ironwood just walked off and be like, okay, cool, whatever. Also, did she have... To, assuming that the house is freaking huge, which it certainly is, did she have to, in her grand escape route, go past her father's office? But if she didn't go past her office, you wouldn't have this exposition dump. Not only that, but where the <laughs> fuck did Klein come from at the end? Secret like he, calls. like he's just he's there with Wise. He's like, oh, I have to go 
uh, pamper Whitley some more. And then he comes his... back, like, from the other direction, like, oh, why did it, why did it go that Be- direction? Because he's got the Marauder's map, okay? No, 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 no. he doesn't no. really want her to know that. Yet. It's his Stan's power. I, I solemnly his swear st- that I am up to no good. But at least, yeah. uh, what's, what's the name of the butler again? Klein. Klein. Klein's stand is the whole building. That's his stand. Oh god! Oh. Actually, well, I, I don't. I don't watch JoJo, so. It's just some. It's just some giant ass stand. That explains it in my mind. But I like the idea that the that that manor has like secret escape tunnels and everything to also. Of course, it, it makes does, sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean other... that, that's also like actual like modern day mansions have that kind of stuff just because. Yeah, and the other and the other little th- problem I have with too is like we got all this other detail about her escaping, but we still haven't seen her just get. In whatever ship she's getting in, and just see her off. Like I, I feel like that's what we will get as the final. We didn't. Sp- we didn't. I we know. didn't get the freaking never-ending story moment where she summons the freaking Raven from uh the Nevermore from Volume One and just flies the fuck out of there. I want that I was so bad. So mad she didn't just fastball special herself out of the damn building. Yeah, that would actually have been. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I remember we wanted that. We did really want that. Oh. <sighs> Would have been so easy to, and it would actually have been like reasonably well. And she doesn't have to like just walk onto the courtyard and it's like, okay, there we go. That's the angle's good. Summons it and then just tosses her ass out of there. And it's still would have been faster. Gravity ruins her landing. Yeah, it would have been faster. And again, and like it... no, no mention of the mother or how she feels about all this. Yep. Like it would have been nice if she like wrote a note or something and like left it in her room. For like the mom, pull a or like gave, gave, or gave, gave, to, like, gave or, it to Klein, or gave like a note to Klein. Like that would have been just like a small little thing too, also. But that's just like really yeah. nitpicky shit that we're saying right now. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about the scene. It's we learned a little bit of information from Ironwood, and otherwise, just eh, the scene dragged on too long. We already knew she was gonna leave. Whoop do fucking do? I, I still am like worried that now Winter is the new Pira, and she and and she's gonna her. I, I don't want Winter to die. I like Winter so much. And then I like happened? Winter a lot too, and I want more of the interaction between Winter and Weiss. I, I like their, I love their dynamic in Volume Three. I want that explored a lot more instead of having Winter just be, you know, another plot device to die. But and then whenever I heard all that Winter is in Mistral, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking of all those comics of like Winter and Crow on missions together. It's like we're doing a mission. And then Crow's like, I'm bored, let's have sex. And Winter's like, no, we're, we have to do a mission. But the game's so good, I can't, re- I can't resist. <laughs> oh man, this is bad. Snowbird for the win. And then that rolls into Blake's part. I mean, I don't know, is there anything else y'all want to talk about this this Y scene? It, no. It, it dragged on, but I honestly didn't think it was bad. Like this, No, it wasn't bad, it just dragged on too long. I think they should have cut, shut this, uh, could have shortened it. This episode was like episode 9, just not as good. Yeah, it's a less good version of episode 9, exactly. You Which is funny because it's more us- of a setup. It's more of a setup. As long as the payoff of the next episode is super epic... For at least, I mean, I mean, for because the thing is, for some of the characters, it's not going to be that. But as long as the ranger payoff is fucking amazing, um, and then then it's worth it because the rest of this it really is just set up from the other characters. Because what are we really going to get from the other characters at this point? Maybe something from Blake, but Yang and Weiss, we're not going to get anything super special from them at this point. We've already gotten what we're going to get from them this volume. I feel like. All right, let's move on to Blake's part. Oh man, it oh, feels boy. good to have Sun back from like the third episode of this volume. It really does. Where has this Sun been the entire time? The actually taking control and telling Blake that she's a fuckwit, Sun. Yes. Yeah. And now I will preface this. It may sound like we're we're harping on Blake pretty hard, but I have forgiven Blake for all of her shitty kittiness that we've had to put up with this entire volume. But there was a long time we had to wait for that payoff. Yeah, it was a long time, but, you know, now when I watch this... And, and the payoff's still not done. She still hasn't actually apologized to Sun. That's true. This is true. 
but we're like 90% there and I like and, and we're we're close enough. We're within tolerance. Yeah, she fought, I mean, this team was really important because we got the reason why she left her team and it was basically the only forgivable reason. It was the only reason the writers could have given. It was the same without... reason I thought it was from the beginning. It was the same reason I thought as well from the beginning. Because only in my fanfiction, I forgiving... result in like one chapter, not a whole no, volume. Not like, not like one chapter. In one chapter, I read your fanfiction. I read up to that point. It was one chapter. Yeah. But I understand why for them, because Blake's such a popular character and she's one of the main four, they drug it on longer. I, I've honestly forgiven. Not only uh, that, every, but like the the fact that she has parents is something yeah. that I had not considered. Yeah, yeah, every single every and I'm actually and again, everything about Blake that I was so pissed off about at the beginning, I completely forgive and I'm very happy with because not only do we get all of the appropriate answers that we needed, we got good explanation for why she had parents and good explanation for why she wasn't why she had abandoned them and and not mentioned them. And why she wouldn't have talked about them too much in the show previously. And we've got a good explanation for why she left her team. But also, the fact that she has parents makes Nora's backstory by far the most tragic. And I'm totally cool with that. I'd much rather have no give Nora the better backstory than Blake. So I'm okay with that also. So I, I, I fully apologize for the beginning of the season when I was really pissed that Blake had parents. I'm totally cool with that now. Also, Callie is fucking hilarious. I love Callie. Yes, Kelly is the, the best. Kelly is the only character in this whole goddamn volume I have not gotten mad at once. Kelly, best mom. Kelly Milfadana, as we know. Like, come on, freaking keep it up. Dude, Kelly uh, was hilarious. Kelly interrupting them so so Blake so son would cheat on her was was a oh great my moment. Oh my god! Oh my! It is Just falling it's, flat on her face. And I, I'm kind of what I I I'm kind of freaking looking forward to the fan base, especially. Bumblebee shippers freaking backpedaling on this, like, oh, well, she was just whatever. Like, no, you freaking grilled, son. You roasted him over a freaking fire for eavesdropping on Blake and Gira just yeah, two exactly. episodes ago. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be, there's going to be some popcorn eating this week for sure. Oh. But I'm still going to be mostly avoiding Facebook because of all the death predictions. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll get into but, that at the end. Oh my I'll, goodness, I have can, my soapbox can I just, for that. Can I just kind of gush over some of the stuff in this episode in this scene before yeah, uh, before we do before we uh do a round where i also had to kind of grill the scene like uh like it's a freaking pork roast yeah man go to town because I oh just... my god i'm of two minds in this um episode the actual like scene itself is really good but uh, I, and i'll get to it later but the whole blake s subplot of the volume and going forward makes absolutely no sense but i'll get to that later um but it, it goes to one of my favorite lines from one of my favorite shows, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. You can oh, pick it's your, such a great show. You can pick your friends, and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. Blake was trying to pick Son's nose. Uh, <laughs> metaph metaphorically. <laughs> metaphorically. <laughs> oh, that's one of the best references ever. Me so metaphorically good. speaking, of course. No, that's really good, dude. Billy, Billy, wise words from Billy, from Billy and Mandy. No, that was uh, uh Mandy that said that. Oh, that was Mandy. Yeah, really? Ma Mandy was telling Billy that because oh, it was uh, it was uh the it was the body swap episode, I oh, think. Okay, wise wise words from wise words from uh, Gray Delisle then. From my original spirit animal. <laughs> uh. So and. And Son's like, no, you, you can't make these kind of decisions for us. Yeah, you can run all you want, but we're still going to be there because we care about you that much. Uh, another, like, really good little detail is that when Blake was talking about, like, what she left, she said she was like, uh, Ruby, Weiss, and Yang, I loved them. Like, I never thought I could love anyone. Like, yeah, it is totally, like, just the sisterly bond thing because, as far as we know... Uh, she's an only child, um, and so, like, Team Ruby gave her this kind of experience that she never had, especially, probably especially with Yang, and not just because Bumblebee, but because that is just Yang's personality and how she treats everybody. She even freaking treats Jean like that, and she's only had, like, one scene where she's actually interacted with Jean. Uh, but yeah, like, Yang being the big sister of the group, and just, Blake, they, they made Blake feel at home, like nobody else had, um. Assumingly, even more so than the White Fang had, 
uh, given the fact that uh, she she would sometimes take her bow off around them, even though, uh, again, like going back to the black trailer, she was still wearing her bow around Adam um, back then, and even in the flashbacks from Volume 3 with them. Uh, and, oh my, Callie. Callie, 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 Callie. You, you Callie's were, son, you were son when you were that age, weren't you? Yeah, she, she totally really was. was. Like, I <laughs> totally think that Blake takes way more after her father than her mother. Oh, and absolutely. And her mother was a lot like son in personality, and that's why she likes him so much. Like, it, yeah, we could talk about, like, which, son's which attitude. Which, again, which again leaves, uh, uh, which again is confirming Black Sun. That definitely helps confirm yes. Black Sun. Yes, yes. Uh... Black Sun confirmed 2017 in the year. Uh, pretty much, to be honest, yeah. Black yeah, Sun definitely uh, looking as confirmed as Renora. Like, oh, like, at the same level as Renora right now. Not as amazing. Okay with this. Not as adorable. Not as amazing. I have to make that clear. But but pretty much just con about the same level of confirmation at this point. But yeah, and... And so, like... And that's why Callie, like, gravitates towards uh, Sun so much, and... Why like, Gira doesn't like Sun because Gira still wants to play that the part of the overprotective dad, and he knows that like Sun is the kind of guy that Blake would end up with, uh, yeah. or should end up with more so than because Adam, he's, more more because, than Adam at least, because he's the same type of person that he ended up with. If that makes sense, Sun is the same yes. type of person that ca that ge that Gira ended up with. Yes, so he can see the parallels. Yes, although, like, again, like, I can't say that parallels are a definite ship thing because, uh, again, going, like, back to Naruto, uh, Minato and Kushina were a lot more like Naruto and Sagara than Naruto and Hinata, but I was still ship Naruhina. Uh, so you can still ship Bumblebee all you want. Uh, this is just evidence in favor of Black Sun. And, yeah. and keep in mind, we're not Bumblebee haters here. Most of us are actually Bumble. We're, at least, but definitely before this season, Bumblebee shippers. I include myself in that, but I'm. Definitely seeing that Black Sun is getting pretty confirmed. Um, I think Sock, you're originally mostly on Bumblebee, right? Yep, uh, but I'm 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 liking Black Sun so far. Oh, I am so. too. I have no problem like, with it because I love. I'll just Sun. have to move. I'll just have my poor heart will just have to move on to Freezer Burn. As far yeah, as I, 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 I want I want Yang to have a husbando. I was kind of holding out that uh, what um, media said that Oscar would hook up with Yang would be. <laughs> yeah, back, back when yeah. I thought that Oscar was in Vale. Yeah, again and again, I, I don't mind because I love Sun and Michael has been for years my favorite person from Rooster Teeth. Still it. Man, and he um, he brought it this episode. He brought it this episode. If you guys haven't been watching their Let's Plays of uh, of Resident Evil Seven, Michael brings it hard in those episodes as well. Uh, I need I need to watch those. I've been Michael and Michael over is them. Michael is he also just delivers on the off topic podcast. Yeah, Michael's pretty fucking I love Michael, he's hilarious. So I totally fine with Black Sun as well. Just, just letting people know that, like, as there's a lot of people on both sides of that ship argument, and we're actually pretty middle of the road in this group. Um, we're just trying to be as practical as we can be. So, not, no offense to all the crazy people, but you guys are crazy if you're not gonna realize that this ship is really setting sail. Yeah, my my thought process is I don't care which way it goes, Bumblebee or Black Sun, as long as it's done organically. Yeah, and it's good. Oh, yeah, uh, I, like I was, the way just, it's being I was done just, so I was far. just thinking. Um, so Weiss is going to Mistral. Who else do we know that's a Mistral? Neptune! Yep. Uh... <laughs> you see, I don't mind Neptune. I, I don't think... mind Neptune either. I don't actually mind him that much. Um, it kind of works because she's kind of still... I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I, I, always, know I, always, like, I always like the dynamic of Neptune and Sun more than Neptune and anybody else. No, that's oh, true. But there's a, we'll there's see. A... There's a ship with like it was one of the guys from uh not Team Coffee but it was like Team it was one of like the big like burly male characters in this series that like it that like people ship together with Yang. Oh, uh, Sage. No, uh, Sage. Sage, yeah, that's Sword it. Bros. Yes. Yeah, uh, that that I don't think that ship is particularly po uh popular. But it's definitely one of those. Oh, hey, uh, so there's Blake, some good art Blake, for it, So I'll like, say that. yeah, Blake goes on dates with Sun. Weiss goes on dates with Neptune. Scarlet's gay. Uh, so that leaves uh, Yang with uh, Sage. <laughs> it's just kind of odd men, odd men out there. 
But, but uh, yeah, it's like yeah. one line from the entire series. A- anything else positive that you guys want to say before I kind of go on my tangents? Oh, I know what exactly what you're, you're going to talk about, too, because you've, you've made mention of this before. I think we can let you go. Maybe we'll have some counterpoints or uh, something, uh, but as of now... I, I, I enjoyed this scene a lot. I, I like how Sun has to beat Blake over the head with a hammer to get his point across. And he does um, a good job of it. I really uh, like the way he delivers lines, and again, Michael kicking ass, and the it's... It's being it's very organically done. I feel like the scenes with Blake this this the last couple episodes we've had her. Um, well, besides the the scenes like the scene with Gira and her and the scene with Sun and her, I really like these those two scenes a lot. And she just made the cutest faces here in this episode. Oh, they yeah. gave her an exact. They gave her a real kitty face in this, which actually pissed me off. So I actually don't like that. But you saw that when she says "my hero" right before that, they literally gave yeah, her a fucking yeah, kitty doing face. the doing the my and hero. Was, and the way she said, yeah, like again, like people who don't ship Black Sun, you, uh, you don't say "my hero" with that in- voice inflection unless you like really into somebody. Yeah, that's that's the that's the equivalent of the look that Nora gave Ren last episode. For those people that are still trying to tell me that Nora feels platonically about Ren, fuck you, you're an idiot. And if you are <laughs> Yeah, if, 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 if anything say, if anything it's Ren, it's Ren who feels more platonic about Nora. But exactly. because Nora definitely wants something. Definitely does not. Also Boop is canon. Fuck you if, if you think it's only... not it's canon. Yeah. <laughs> God, I will never so not laugh. quote that when we're talking about Renor. Like, yeah, oh, no. if only, if only, take oh, action. Shit. Yeah, take action. Take son. action, son. Yeah, seriously. Uh, but no, but that look is the equivalent of that scene from the previous episode. It really is that uh, uh, that 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 line that Blake gives. That's the equivalent of Nora's look to Ren. Is that? Yeah, you're right. You don't say that unless you're into somebody. I ship them will be in general, but. I'm well aware that that is a very big confirmation for Black Sun. There's no possible way to get around that at all. And I'm fine with that. It makes sense at this point. She's finally getting that he's been there. It, 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 it makes sense that he's been there for her the whole time, and she's finally starting to more realize that. So I like the scene. I, I think I know what Media is going to talk about, and I don't necessarily completely disagree with him, so... I'm curious to see what media has to say. He, he makes some. He's gonna make some very fair points. Just a fair warning so, for everyone. Uh, so media I feel soapbox has been dusted off again. Go to town. I feel like there's some context missing, especially from Gira's end. What does he know, and what doesn't he know about the White Fang, comparative to what we know and don't know about the White Fang? Because how does he not already know all this? So, um, apparently, Finnick and Cossack were definitely telling the truth that uh, Santa Khan, um, whoever it may be, uh, wants Gira on his or her side because he, he, dete- he or she detects a power struggle coming with Adam. Uh, apparently, I guess, uh, negotiations between Hazel and Sienna Khan did not work out well. And maybe that, maybe that's what kind of started this, but it goes back to like, so why was Ilya spy? I like just some questions like why was Ilya spying on the Belladonna household? Um, why did she tell Blake like you should never have come back? Is all this stuff going down in Menagerie? I thought it was going down in Mistral. Um, like what does Blake? What does Blake returning home to Menagerie have to do with? any of this uh, because th- this was all independent of Blake like Finnick and Cossack did not know that Blake was home when they went to tell Gira that oh hey you should k- kind of keep your eye out uh, for Adam and I, I also said in my review um, of can't remember which episode it was it was one of the episodes with Blake though I think it was either like episode 8 or 9 probably episode 8 uh, that Gira probably does know that Sienna Khan is kind of a douche but is still kind of forced to work with uh the white fang because they they they're both like they both have a lot of say in the uh town but the the whole thing that set sun off was that the white fang don't wear masks in menagerie uh and if he picked up on something wouldn't 
literally every other Faunus and Menagerie have picked up on it. Isn't isn't Menagerie supposed to be like super crowded, like twenty four seven, uh, to the point where they wanted to rebel against the other kingdoms to get more land? Just none of this none of this stuff is really adding up to me up for me. And I know it's a lot of like unconnected thoughts, but that's because they're unconnected lines of dialogue and unconnected scenes in the show that just they're not amounting to anything right now. And a lot of it is because we just don't have the proper context. We don't know any uh, we don't we haven't seen anything from Gear's perspective. Yeah, I mean, I think you're mostly right about this. Uh, you could the only real defense you could say is possibly they might give us some more context next volume. Um, but I think you're right. There's a lot of things like why doesn't the big thing of why doesn't Gira know so many of these things? It really doesn't make any sense at all. Why did they have to tell? And, and it wouldn't. Have, the other thing is like it wouldn't have been that difficult. He could have been more on board with it when they got there, and then they could have started planning or something like that. And and they still could have had some of the similar interruptions. Uh, it doesn't. It it's almost like they feel like they needed him to be sort of out of the loop for. Yeah, he feels for, extremely for out of the loop. Yeah, it feels like the writers thought they needed him to be out of the loop for the rest of what happened this volume to make sense with Blake and Son and everything. But honestly, they didn't. He didn't need to be this out of the loop to, for everything else to make sense. In fact, it's the opposite. This makes. It's we're a little bit more confused now because he was so out of the loop, and I I don't know why they had to write him that way. And uh, this this goes back to my review of Menagerie, uh, and to a lesser extent my review of uh, episodes eight and nine. But Gira and Callie watched the Vital Festival tournament on their on when it was live. They saw what they saw the Fall of Beacon happen live. Granted, they saw what Cinder wanted them to see, so they probably didn't see the White Fang involvement in it. But that doesn't account for the breach from Volume 2, which was also all over the news, was way, like, more dangerous and way more um, of a crisis than what the volume properly showed, to the point where Ironwood was put in as head of security. A foreign general being put in as head of security in Vale for the Vital Festival tournament and for the rest of the festivities, not just the tournament. Like, that's how bad it was, and the White Fang being behind it with help from the humans. Like, why why didn't this set off flags with flags with, uh, Gira? Yeah. Like, why why wasn't... And that was... That was weeks before the... uh, That was at least a week before Volume 3 even started, so why wasn't all this stuff already happening why did time seem to freeze and menagerie between volume two and volume four to the point where like they just completely glossed over like they don't have any knowledge for volume three or volume two just i don't it just doesn't make any sense to me no i agree it doesn't make sense to me either i don't know why they don't know more information they should it's not like communication has been out for that long, so they would know a lot of this. Six to eight months. No. Yeah, you make some very fair points about that. Um, in all honesty, if anyone else has anything to say, I think we've really wrapped up with Blake's part. I think so, too. Yep. We can move on to the last part, which basically is the shortest and least able to talk about part, really. The fight's going to happen. Yeah, uh, that's... Yeah. Ren did not have an existential crisis like I thought he would. He, he's um, he's like halfway there. Yeah, well, I thought he was gonna well, have. You know, it. I, I thought he was gonna have it up on the mountain. Um, I think he's still gonna have it. I I, I have because because here's the thing. Here's the thing. We still haven't gotten Nora's speech. We still haven't gotten the moment that the animator has alluded to with uh with Samantha Ireland. So unless we have, in which case it was uh a lot weaker than what we were led to believe it would be. I'm still going. We haven't got. We haven't got. Yeah, I am too. So, so basically, I mean, yeah, there's, but he's, I mean, Ren's definitely not having a good time. 
at all. He's he's not happy. He is having too much discord. He, he wants he wants have he wants off of his wild ride. Yeah, he yeah. Please stop, Ren. Ren would like to get off right now. It's he's it's lit as I said earlier. It's literally come full circle of Ren. Yeah. The troubles Which... are ending where they're beginning and potentially beginning again. Yeah, exactly. So. There's not much more to say about that, besides the fact that the Grim, a lot of people saying the Grim isn't as scary looking as they thought it would be. I don't think that really matters. It matters more how afraid he is of it and how formidable it is and how scary it looks, because it's not a horror show. We don't need to have them be that graded. I don't know. I just think that's pointless. So, um, honestly, I don't know much if there's that much to talk about if we shouldn't just go back into predictions and things, because really the important thing is now predicting how this will go down because there's not really much to analyze here. Yeah, like, I don't know as far, I don't know as, far as, like, people say in the Grim isn't scary. We haven't even seen it in action. Like, we've, yeah, like, we haven't like, even seen, like, the whole Grim clearly. Enough. Exactly. We haven't seen it in action, so... All right, let's do predictions, then. So we'll do from bottom to top. I don't know. <laughs> no. Um, let's do what we're going to expect for the next episode, and then obviously the Team Ranger versus uh, the Nuklave fight. All right, Sock, you're up. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is awkward. I mean, you can hand off your turn to someone else if you really want to. Um. Yeah, I'll just give it to media right now. Well, uh, my, all my predictions still stand. Um, I think it will take up the majority of next episode, or at least half of it. Um, and I think we'll be getting Sean Semblance, and I do think they might, uh, oh, it's hard to tell, it's not, now we're getting it all in one episode instead of, uh, spreading it out like I thought they were going to. Same, um, yeah. Because there, there's only so many big reveals and big um, moments you can have in one episode. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that uh, we'll get Jean Semblance and a little bit of Ruby Eye powers to kill it. Okay, well, I guess it's my turn, so... Unless Saki oh, want to go. Oh, um, I, I do have something to add to that, and... uh. It's because I, I'm I'm working on a particular video where I'm I'm talking about um how people have interacted with each other and uh I, it got me thinking about like Ruby and uh how I originally saw her character and I still see her character like this, but uh she's the kind of character who doesn't change and doesn't have to change because she encourages change in other people. We we saw with Jean in Volume 1, we saw it with Weiss in Volume 1. Uh, we saw it with Yang with the the flashback, like, their backs, their whole backstory, like, why Yang is the way she is is because of Ruby. Uh, maybe a little bit with Blake, uh, although it seemed like Weiss and Yang had a lot more impact on uh, that character arc and, and Sun with this volume. Um, but I think that uh, Ruby might have a similar impact on Rin this next episode as far as when the when shit starts to go down, when Jean is having his own existential crisis because he's weak and Ren is because of nightmares and Nora's just not strong enough, Ruby's going to be there in the front lines, leading the charge, rallying the troops, and that is going to be what inspires Ren to take action. Son. Yes. Sorry, I had sorry, I had to add that. I had to add my bad joke in there. Sorry, I had to do yep. it. All right, I'll go. So this is what I expect from the next episode. So I feel we're gonna get Oscar. Yep. Uh, we will get something from. It'll probably be extremely short. Something from Weiss, Blake, and Yang. And then most of the rest of the episode will be Team Ranger fighting the monster. We might, I really, I, I, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope we see Dr. Watts. 
Because they've shown the all the other bad guys. Yeah, that could be the end credits as we see Dr. Watts. Part of me thinks that the that the Bandit Clan will come in and save the day for Team Ranger. Um, but yeah, I don't really know. That's yeah, basically... I, I don't think anyone's going to die. I could see someone getting hurt, though. That's yeah, hurt. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that as well, if you guys, because this is a pretty short podcast, and I have a soapbox to get on, if you guys don't mind, in a little bit, not, not quite yet, but in a little bit, I sort of have a soapbox to get on. Okay, yeah. that's fine. And, and uh, if stock wants to go before your soapbox, that's that's perfect. Yeah, it, literally just one line, because uh, anything can happen at this point. All I know is if I, if we don't get Raven, I riot. So you really do want Raven then, damn. Yes, I like cuz this this thing has been around for a long time. The our our, our little heroes aren't exactly pros yet. And I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't think it, I don't think they're going to be able to kill it by themselves. No. I mean, I sort of agree that they probably won't be able to kill it by themselves either less silver eye powers silver eye powers would be able to kill it or at least stop it or something because here's the other thing with this okay so is it my turn now this isn't quite my soapbox part but can i at least go for my prediction so yeah i think we'll get some little we'll get like hopefully just like a couple of shots for blake and maybe ty yang if, if media's prediction of him going also is true so blake yang ty yang uh weiss I don't know what we would get from Blake. There's a good chance we'd be getting more Blake than we keep expecting because I think what High Power was saying earlier about her or somebody about said this this pot this, you know just a few uh, minutes ago that uh, Blake's uh, storyline is now getting just as important as the Ranger storyline, um, and I, I think that's true. I agree with that. And I'm besides the the, the reservations of Gira being an idiot aside. Um, I, I like that. I'm okay with it. I think it'll be very interesting. Um, I like the idea of her taking back, them trying to take back the White Fang instead of just destroying it. I think that's very interesting. Um, and I, there's a good chance we'll get a decent amount from her actually next episode, and not just a little hint. Um, and or there's also a chance we that was that was the big dramatic moment, and we don't get anything from Blake actually next episode, which I could see that as well. So there's a lot of variability with Blake there. Why the rest of them? I just a tiny little bit, and the rest will mostly be the Ranger fight. The other thing is, I don't know how long this episode is going to be because I don't know how long they can drag out this Grim fight. We know so little about this Grim if you really think about it. Yeah, we know it's basically a Nukalave or however the fuck you pronounce that, but we don't know how it fights. We don't know why it's so hard to kill. Um, we seem to. The other thing is, it's. It seems to run around in an area where there aren't any huntsmen or huntresses. Maybe it has encountered them, maybe it hasn't. It definitely is going to be more powerful than them. Speaking towards its intelligence. Yeah, speaking towards its intelligence. But also you have to think about the fact that, and I don't know if the writers are aware of this or they're going to think about it in this way, but it is also something that has been living in a, a world where they're hasn't it also hasn't been having to go as far as we can tell has not had to go up against the most formidable of opponents yes it trashed that entire town by itself but we know there weren't any huntsmen and huntresses there if 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 hanzo papa ren was the strongest thing they had to go against let's be honest he's not as formidable as even ruby probably as even ruby is right let's let's be honest about that um so I'm also, I'm actually, you know, the more I look into this, the more I've watched this episode and everything, the more I'm prepared to be disappointed by the next episode a little bit, to be honest, because, and also maybe it won't happen, but there's definitely that, that chance that they might just kind of beat it and they just might start making it to, the fight may not actually be, go that long. This is, I guess, a slight crack theory that the fight might actually go that long and them going, getting to Mistral will take up the rest of the time instead. That's not as super likely, I think. More likely, it is going to be a crazy hard fight. I don't know what to expect, but I do think we'll get both Silver Eyes and John Semblance. I'm with Media uh, and High Power, I think, who both said something along the lines of, if we don't get John Semblance after this volume, I don't care anymore. I I'm with you guys on that. I'm already prepared to be very disappointed by John Semblance 
and I think it's just going to be some big giant shield bullshit, and it's not really going to be that impressive. And I don't. It's not going to be that. It, we're, I'm already going to be disappointed if we don't get it by ne- by the end of the season. It's going to be even more disappointing. They built it up too much. Unless it's some super fucking awesome thing, as what media said. Unless it's some like Green Lantern shit. Who cares? Um, and I, I'm with high powered. Somebody's going to get hurt. I think that somebody is going to be Ren. Uh, second chance, I think it would possibly be Nora. It's going to be Ren or Nora that gets hurt. And um, I am waiting for Sam Ireland's speech. I don't think we've gotten it yet. I would go with the the Nora speech as being something that would, would be the thing that motivates Ren, snaps him out of his stupor more so than Ruby. Although I could see Media also being right, of course, because he ends up being right all the time anyway. Um, I don't know if that speech will contain uh, the any love confession there. My guess at this point is they're going to save that for next volume because they teased the fuck out of it in episode 10. And I'm probably going to have blue balls uh, over Renora for the next nine months, which eh, that'd be okay. I'd be fine with that. If they, if they just, again, if they keep building it and doing it right, I'll be fine with that. Um, ah, the Bandit Clan coming, I could still see that as well and them saving the day. Because that would be really interesting if they come in, they technically save Crow's life, but then they're actually imprisoned by the Bandit, like, kind of like imprisoned by the Bandit Clan. That could be a really interesting dynamic and a really interesting thing to explore for the next volume. I would really be interested in seeing that. Um, yeah, that is true. If, if the Bandit Clan does save them, then they're kind of stuck with the Bandit Clan. They're kind of stuck with the, for better or worse, they're stuck with the Bandit Clan. That could be a really interesting sort of uh, storyline for them to explore for at least part of the next volume. Or trying to recruit the Bandit Clan to help them. Uh, defend, yeah, something like uh, that. That interaction could go very, could be the Bandit Clan characters would be very interesting as well. We already know Raven's really interesting, a really cool character. I'd like to see more of her. So that was, that's an argument for that going down. I, again, I think Ren or Nora will get hurt um, because it will trigger their um, romance in a certain way because really the way they've been building this up, and again, I focus on this more because I'm such a crazy Renora shipper, but it's also true. I mean, I've been right about most things I predict about them. Um, it's definitely an important shit for this series. We know that they they shove it down our throats. It's not. It's partly why I shit them so hard. Um, we know that there are reservations from Nora, uh, from Boop, and just the fact that you can tell clearly tell she's in love with him and hasn't told him yet, and that's got to happen in some way. And they're nerv- and she's nervous about losing the friendship or something like that. We don't know how Ren feels. So either way, something has to trigger one or both of them to realize how they feel and to realize that they can't be so cautious forever and they have to act on their their feelings. So that's why I'm seeing one of them getting hurt and that is where we get, you know, something to trigger them to, to you know, maybe talk with the the other teammates about it and then they get encouragement to sort of, conf- you know, something like that. I, that's how I see it. I still see Jean as the wingman telling Ren, hey, Ren, you know, go get the girl, you dumbass. Something like that. Maybe not this volume. Oh my god, he's like, I missed out on my opportunity to get some. I'm not going to let the same happen to you. That's basically what I would say would happen. He'd be like, you know, I didn't see what I had until it was too late. I don't want you to make that same mistake. I know you're not together together, but stop. You should be. Yeah, no, that's, well, that's what I wrote. And I had that as like a little thing that I wrote down, not quite in the fan fiction, but like, that's basically my headcanon. And again, if you guys didn't know already, my headcanon for their backstory is exactly 100% what I thought. So I've been right before about this. I was also right about basically everything Weiss related this volume, just so I can brag about that. Um, but I see it basically, that's what would happen. Nora will confess. And so Ren's going to get hurt. Nora's going to be very troubled by that. She will confess for him. This will probably start happening next after they get hurt. The next volume, it's going to be she confesses to him. He isn't sure how to feel. That makes her that hurts her in some way, possibly more dramatically. And then John has to tell Ren, "Hey, Ren, um, I made the mistake of not realizing what I had until I lost it. You can't do that." And that's what's going to get them together. That's exactly that's how I see it happening, basically. Um, so that's I, the other thing is Crow also is still hurt. So if the Bandit Clan doesn't heal him, that's why I'm wondering. You see, if the Bandit Clan doesn't come in, I see this fight as being disappointing because 
they need to get I don't like the idea of them still not having Crow somehow resolved by the end of the season because I'm getting a little bored of it. And I would if, if the Bandit Clan doesn't come in and that's not what is the next big thing, this fight could end up going actually not be going pretty easily, and then Crow becomes the main point of concern after that. I could see that happening as well. Yeah, and it, it would actually be kind of like a slap him in the face. It's like, oh, Ren, by the way, uh, that giant monster that kind of like destroyed your whole entire village and brought, you know, a lot of panic and more more grim. Yeah, it's kind of a pushover. Well, that's, I can see that, though, because Ren, let's be honest, has never been the best fighter. He's been shown to be a weaker fighter, and that's not his strength, you know? That's not his his character, which I'm fine with. That's probably why I like him so much, is he's clearly one of the weaker fighters in the show. Uh, along with Jean, but not in a comedic way, just in a, a, a very obvious, he's not that great at it, but he's still a really badass sort of character anyway kind of thing. Um, the only way I could see it, like, like, Ren's, like, Ren does, like, some Attack on Titan, like, spins now. Um, like, you think he just uses, like, little semblance, I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna go with this whole thing. It's like, he uses semblance to cloak, to, like, pretty much uh, mask himself from the Grim as everyone's fighting and distracting. He just, like, comes behind it and just kind of, like, slits its throat. Like just assassinates it. Yeah, I mean, because I, I, I don't know. They've been, they've. I guess as it turns out, they built this Grim up as as the boss fight, and it could end up being a really crazy big boss fight. But at the same time, they didn't actually build at the, up at that. the at the same time. We all remember the ending of Volume Two. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We've had disappointing endings to see before, and we can see that happening. And there's other stuff that has to be taken care of here. So the fight itself. Could end up not being that big of a deal. That's that's something I'm I'm thinking about to be honest. And uh, this is, by the way, as much as I just as I just spoke, that was not my soapbox. I have something completely different to talk about as, on my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> not completely different, but 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 uh, related, but but not that. Because I, I mean, there's a reason I had a lot to say because like the way they did this was not the way we were expecting. I expected to get some of the fight this episode or something. So the fact that they're saving it all for the last episode, which is not how they did the last volume, has me worried for it being a disappointment. I don't know what anybody else thinks, but I could be, I mean, could be crazy, but. No, I, I agree with you. High power still there? Oh, I'm here. Okay, you're there. You just fell asleep. I'm sorry I put you asleep. Oh man, it's yeah. You make some very fair points. It's, we, we this is the we just gotta wait and see for the next episode. But you make yeah. a fair point. They're gonna have to resolve Crow in some way, shape, or form. They can't leave him in like a die. Like I'll, I'll be happy if they're like, here, drink this. It'll make you feel better, or or like at least you know better first aid than what he's received from Team Ranger. And, and another God. point I want to point out, too, is that you wonder where they're going to end this with. And I guess this might be me reading too much into it, but um, do they still end up going to Kuchinashi? Maybe not in this volume, but next volume. Because the everything about the cities has played out in some way. And I think technically Kuchinashi still hasn't. And I still have that in my head that, that might that's supposed to play out in some way because every other town has. Yeah, that's like the name. closest city other than Mistral, yeah. basically. Yeah, the name has <laughs> always turned out to mean something, and that one hasn't had any relevance yet. You so want your I secret like damn it. it. I do, but it's not just that. It's also just the fact that like they, the towns have all meant something, and this one hasn't, because when they got the flashback, they weren't there. They weren't in that town yet. And, and we know we've seen the town's name before. I do feel like they probably will go there before they get to Mistral. Um, so that's another thing that, does that happen also? Like, does the Grim fight get, or does that just happen next volume or something like that? Those are all the things I'm, I'm kind of thinking about to how long, I mean, is this episode really going to be that long? We get all that stuff. I'd be interesting if we did. I'd be fine with getting, happy. I'd be fine with the Grim fight actually being kind of disappointing if we get some good shit afterward. Oh yeah. If, if they, if the Grim fight's just short, but then we get like really important stuff afterwards, like, Okay. I'm okay with a short and good fight, but we get important plot stuff afterwards. And if we yeah. see Watts, I'll be even happier. Yeah, I agree. We've, I agree. we've seen all the other villains except Watts. We have to see Watts. Watts I mean, is one to watch out for, dude. 
Yeah, I mean, I could see Watts being the ending cr- credits thing, but also it'd be interesting to see him before that as well. So, you know, I don't know. I don't want this. I don't want this end of this volume to feel too much like a little transition volume. You know, it's been a really good volume so far, and I want some sort of payoff for the ending. Even if it's not the boss fight, if we get some, I don't know, Renor, big Renor development and some other plot points and maybe some Bandit Clan or something or other instead of just a boss fight or whatever, then I'd be very interested in that. Yeah, I don't want Crow to be stuck in, uh, you know, poison mode for like, until like next season because yeah, just like, I don't care. I just feel like, that would be like Naruto a bridge, just like you left me in the water prison jutsu. Yeah, I think you break. Yeah, like I just don't care anymore. Yeah, it's like I'm done. It's like I'm not I'm not bothered anymore. Like they're just gonna cure him. Whatever Who cares. Like it's not it's not as I, if they think it's gonna be suspenseful, it's not gonna be as suspenseful as they will think it's gonna be. Would yeah, be it's like I, I think I think whatever would, would piss me off the most is like it's still not resolved. Next season comes and like three episodes and he dies. It's like what was the point? Like why did yeah. you make us wait? Exactly. But not that I'm calling for his death. I, I like Crow. No, I'm, I'm not either. Saying. I like Crow a lot, too. I could see... He's one of the characters I could definitely see dying eventually, but I think it'd be silly to kill him now, for sure. Especially with what Salem said. It's just like, yeah. I, don't, I think he's too important of a piece to die this early. Yeah. He's the type of character that you could see being disposable because he's that wise, adult, badass fighter type character. And that's the type of character that usually ends up getting killed. And then, you know, I mean, he's sort of the ser- he's a little bit of a serious black kind of character. No, and, yeah, he's you know, the, no, he's, it's also like, it's also the freaking anime trope of like the teacher, like, yeah. uh, you know, teaches for a little bit and you gain a lot of life lessons and stuff like that. You gain a little bit more power and then they die and then you have to overcome yes, that. Exactly. AKA so, being Ruby. Yeah, so that's why I can see him dying. But, but I, I, this is if this is the way he goes down, that's really lame. Can we just fix him already? We're all assuming that he's going to. Most people are assuming he's going to live. Can we just get him cured already? Like it's not that interesting anymore. So yeah, again, this still isn't my soapbox. If I have time, I have a soapbox topic. <laughs> This is that wasn't your soapbox. Nope, that was not my soapbox. That was not my soapbox at all. All right. Well, I mean, if you want to go to town, man, you can go to town. I've spoke my piece. Yeah, I'm 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 fresh out of soapboxes for this episode. Yeah, I I said mine when I was talking about uh the breach and the how the whole fauna subplot doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, and I'm I'm and, I'm, and we're with you on that. So my soapbox is something that I've been. Really annoyed with uh, Facebook and the internet for the past week, and I'm still seeing it already. And I'm going to have, I'm going to have a real, yeah, you know, I'm going with this. I think most people do, and I'm already having a bad week. I'm going to have to stay away from the internet for this entire week. Luckily, I have an abridged series that I've actually started working on that I can bury myself into instead, so I don't have to see Facebook anymore because Facebook is inundated with the idea that Ren and or Nora are going to die this this episode. And goddamn that would be the stupidest fucking thing in the universe if they did because the pro- one of the biggest problems with that I see with the fandom and I I was never annoyed with the fandom that much. I, the shipping wars I don't care about. I, I understand people arguing about that stuff, but the death wish of this fandom is nuts in a lot of ways and people are either wanting people to die or they're so worried that people are going to die just because Pira died. And, and nobody really cites any of the other deaths as being. It's just because Pira died. Well, let's let me take a. There's a couple points. I well, actually, it's like 15 points I have. I'll try not to use all of them because I'd be here for another hour if I did. But Pira was supposed to die from the beginning, and most importantly, and media can back me up on this. She got basically zero backstory, and she got basically very, very little actual development throughout the first three volumes. The only real development Pira ever yeah, throughout got. Yeah, throughout the first, well, definitely throughout the first volume. Volume two, we got a little bit of the stuff with the dance and the pedestal talk, that uh, a scene that I actually really loved. And then, uh, yeah, most of it was in volume three, and most of it was tied in with the maidens and the larger plot. And it was tied into her dying, real, it was tied into her death, um, her death uh, arc, really, instead of actual just developing her as a character. 
We didn't really get any of that from Pira, and we definitely didn't get real backstory. The funny thing is, Pira was a really popular character, right? And there's re the reasons for that was she was nice. Everybody, a lot of people shipped her with Jean, and she was a great fighter. That was why people liked her, which is fine. But if you think about it, there was very little substance to her as a character. And with good reason, yeah. it's not yeah, the which writer. Is, which is, yeah, which is what they were going for. And it's actually kind of why I liked the character and where they went with her. Because, uh, as I've said on numerous occasions, she was a doormat. Like, she had no ambition. She had no goal. She was just a tool for whoever could freaking get their claws in her. And, well, Ozpin's claws sunk the deepest. And that's why she died the way she did. Yeah, she did not have any will of her own. Uh, Ruby is selfless, but Ruby is selfless in a very specific way whereas pira is selfless in a more doormatty type of way and and in a, in a no will of her own way whereas ruby is very more conscious i don't know if it makes sense but like almost more consciously selfless she really cares about everybody else and pira uh, she, 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 she's more like saitama from one punch man sure whatever <laughs> i don't get on i just seen, does it i've seen two anime all the way through and there's one season and i'm watching full metal alchemist right now that's it so I don't know these references, but you're probably, I'm sure you're right. So that's the, that's a major difference between, uh, you know, Ren, Nora, and also Jean for that matter too, because I put Jean in this, in this boat as well of, of, you know, he shouldn't die. Uh, Pira, there really actually wasn't that much to care about her. And that's why she died. I mean, the writers didn't need to give her anything to care about, you know, any reason to care about her because they were going to kill her from the very beginning. We knew that the entire time. Whereas episode 10, the funny thing is a lot of people are interpreting episode 10 um, for Ren and Nora as if that the writers blew their load and now they're, we don't, we know what we need to know about them so they can die now, which is fucking retarded. That's the exact opposite of the truth. They actually now have plot armor. Their backstory is plot armor. Because we know enough about their backstory to really give a shit about them because their backstory is so goddamn tragic and sweet and sad and adorable. But we don't know what happened afterwards. We don't know how they got, they were able to train themselves to become great fighters, quote unquote, because Ren's not that great, but Nora's clearly very powerful. Um, but they, we don't know how they were able to survive. Did they go to an orphanage? Were they literally on their own the entire time? How did they get to where they are now? And how does all of that affect where they're going to go in the future? I know people like to tell, oh, they teased Arcos, they teased Arcos, and that never happened. But let's be honest, they gave Renora some, as a relationship and as characters, some serious backstory and serious reason to care about them and to see and to help develop their characters. And there's a lot more to be said for them developing that um, than can be gained from just killing one or both of them for shock value or for motivation, because the motivation gained from one or both of them dying is much smaller than what was gained from Pira dying. Pira dying was the big trigger for a lot of people to start giving a shit for people to realize how the characters to realize how bad, how just fucked up this world is. Killing one or two more characters, it's not going to add anymore. It's not going to make a difference for Jean and Ruby. They've already lost so much. They made a very big point about that in episode 10 as well, about, and Media analyzed this very well in one of his reviews, that, you know, Jean lost Pira. They all lost Pira. Ruby's already lost more than anybody could possibly lose. Ren and Nora dying too? Is that really going to make that much of a difference, really, compared to what she's already lost? Not really. Not going to make that much of a difference. So the only benefit you would gain would be a, a, some really interesting, some great shock value and some sad performance from one of the them dying or whatever that's all you would get and that the impact you would get would last one episode and it would be done after that basically there's nothing gained writing state from a writing standpoint from killing them off and you wouldn't give them all this backstory that you just gave them and just starting to develop them and then kill them off because you can't say they did that with Pira because they developed her to die and she didn't get the same development that they're getting um, basically the point, and John too, John's getting some real development now too, and a lot of people think he's going to die to Cinder or Salem, especially if Cinder, or Salem, Cinder and Salem are not the big, the end game of the entire series, especially Cinder, why would you kill him? He's supposed to be developing a lot as well. If they start yeah, and I mean, characters like John was always portrayed as like a secondary main character, like yeah. there's the main four, and then there's John right up there with them, like, 
He, I think, uh, he actually got more screen time in Volume One than Yang did. Yeah, yeah, John, as much as people hate to admit it, is a main character and has yeah. and really has been since Volume One. You know, for, for me, it's like I view like viewing Ruby as an anime. Uh, I actually see John as the uh, as the main character and Ruby as like the uh, that you know, the first girl you meet at at the you know the whatever super you know. Um, mutant high school. It's the chick that you run into whenever you're, well, running, whenever you're late. She to has class. the plot armor. Yeah, she's like. She's well, not only that, armor. but Jean is a way more conventional anime protagonist. He is a lot. Yes. He has a lot more similarities to like Naruto and Luffy and uh, Natsu and all these other like famous anime yeah. protagonists. Uh, and I, I already made one reference to the show, but it's kind of fresh in my head because I was listening to the soundtrack earlier today. But uh, One Punch Man. Where uh, the One Punch Man himself, Saitama, is kind of just the selfless. He he's a hero just for the hell of it. He doesn't really care about. He doesn't have any real grandiose ambitions beyond just be hero, punch things. Uh, and then you got his like kind of sidekick Genos, who is a way more conv- he's way more conventional, angsty, typical anime protagonist. And that's kind of what Jean is. Uh, yeah. Jean, Jean is the Genos in this uh, analogy. Yeah, I see where you're, I see where you're going with that. But it's just like as far as like any anime, anime trope goes, like Jean is the protagonist. Exactly. No, he is. He is. And 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 it's just the I'm and also the whole theory of they're going to kill off all. If that's their logic, that's this show's really stupid. That's a really it, 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 <laughs> that's some retarded logic. This show. And, yeah, this is no yeah. Reason. This is this isn't Game of Thrones. It's not. It was not set up as a freaking uh, gambling ring of who's going to survive to the end. Yeah. It, here's the other thing to point out. Another my 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 new analogy for this is Lord of the Rings. because the Lord of the Rings did was they got their main group of people together, they killed off one of the main people, um, fucking uh, Boromir. Boromir. Boromir died. Sean Bean. For, Sean Bean. Died well, he's played by the, Sean Bean. He he had it coming. Yeah, he had it coming exactly. So Boromir, and they knew that. And and by the way, J.R.R. Tolkien did know that when he wrote the book back in the forties or whatever the fuck he started writing it. Um, so he didn't know Sean Bean was going to be playing, and that's that's how it all worked out. But either way, so Boromir dies in the first book, and technically Gandalf kind of does too, but Boromir dies in the first book. None of the main protagonists die throughout the rest of the series. Yeah, they get sh- they get shattered, they they get like they they reunite and get split up a couple times. Like Frodo Frodo stays with Sam uh and they they go on their journey. Uh Aragorn Gimli and Legolas go on their journey. Merry and Pippin have their own journey with the tree men. Uh, yep. Gandalf is bouncing around the two groups, and they eventually unite and, and then yep. split, and Gandalf's bouncing around between them. Yep. Uh, but yeah, and all, and all that, like, even, oh my god, like, just a scene that made me just cheer with joy from Return of the King is when Aragorn, like, looks at all that he has done and looks at how far everyone has come, and even though he only actually spent like a couple days with this kid, he still goes for Frodo when he charges yeah. freaking Mordor. Yeah, and 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 that's I uh, I'm hoping and I'm seeing that as being more the angle they should go for. There are still some side characters and obviously some villains they need to kill, and that's where I that's what I see is happening, and that'd be I think better because. He, there's enough characters to care about now with those main seven now with you know um, Ru- Team Ruby and the remainder of Team Juniper. There's enough people to care about, and that's about as much as they can handle. Uh, and I don't see any of them as being worth killing um, because it, it, those are the people they've been build, building up now enough to really give a shit about. Um, and I, I just if they start killing all those characters, I'm, I'm basically done. I, and it, I know it's partly because, yes, I'm a huge, crazy Renora shipper, and they are the characters I care the most. It's not just like a little bitchy, oh, they're dumb. But it's more like, I mean, if the characters I care about are gone, why would I watch anymore? But I'd also say if they kill Jean, I'm done too, because as much as I love Ren and Nora, um, Jean's being developed, and they're actually trying to give him a lot. There's a reason to care about him. So him dying too is just as bad, even though I don't actually care that much about Jean personally. He's not that high on my favorite characters list. But it's just the principle of of losing the characters that they're developing is just ridiculous. And uh, the other thing is, like, yes, you can say they teased Arcos and then they killed Arcos, but the the depth of Renora's relationship already is much, much more. 
you could argue that 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 Arcos was like a crush, strong infatuation from Pierre. But especially after you got the last episode, especially if you actually listen to Boop, guys, Boop is canon. Re listen to all of the lyrics; they're very good. It's very interesting. Um, there's a lot there. There's a lot with her being afraid to tell him, and that back and forth, how they develop that would be far more interesting than just killing them right now. Just don't get it. There's so much more depth to the show from developing things like that um, and them actually getting a decent romance in this fucking show, which is about teenagers for crying out loud, um, than just killing one of the, the characters off. So there you go. There's my soapbox. I'm annoyed at, at Facebook. Facebook is stupid. Fuck everybody on Facebook. Um, yeah. But I'm on Facebook. And the thing is, I write either way because if they kill them off, then it's bad writing. And I mean, unless you're watching this from Facebook, in which case, like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're not this, if they're not being yeah, well, like we're this, we're not talking then... about you. We're talking about other people on Facebook. Yeah, we're talking about the people that are like, oh, they're gonna die. Anybody who's actually given my full argument to, like, nobody has a has an argument for it because factually they still could do it, but then it's bad writing, and there's no reason to watch the show anymore if they're gonna be that shitty of writers to kill off. You know things that they're developing. It just doesn't make any sense, literally. Yeah, you're you're so fucking right about all the points you brought up. Dude. I think, I think it's time that we close this down. <laughs> it's time to stop. It's time uh, to this stop. Was, this was a fun. This was. I did not like this episode. Um, I, well, no. Um, I guess. Well, that's actually kind of a bad place to stop that. Uh, but yeah. Can, uh, <laughs> Can we uh just go down the line, like give our final thoughts on this episode? Well, yeah, that's what I was about to say. We got our closing statements. Um, dude, you can make your closing statement first, but uh, I'm gonna have you on a timer for a minute. I will go first because I already was on my soapbox, and there's no, there's not actually even no development this episode. Need much to say. Um, I'm. This episode was fine. It's a build-up episode. I don't. I'm. I'm a little worried about the next episode that it could end up being kind of disappointing. Uh, depending on what they do. I hope we get the Bandit Clan, actually just because I think that would end up giving us the most interesting things to talk about. Um, people aren't going to die. Shut up, Facebook. Fuck you guys. There we go. Renora, for, Renora's life. That's all I have to say. I want the Bandit Clan. This episode was fine. I I, I have no clue what they're going to do for this next episode. We just got to wait and see. That's all I got to say. Uh, I did not like this episode the first time I watched it. I was just like, eh, it was all right, I guess. Eh. But uh, after the second time I watched it, I, I enjoyed it a lot more. And this has been really fun to talk about. A lot more fun than I thought it would be. Yeah, uh, it was. I had a so blast. I, I guess I, I mixed the positive on it. Uh, it's not as good as the last episode. It's not as good as the God last damn, two. It's not. It's, the it's last, not as good as the last. So yeah, good. it's not as good as the last two episodes. It's not as good as episode four or. Uh, I, I'd i say it's probably not even as good as the first two episodes from this volume, but it, it is better than episode three or five or eight. Um, it's still generally, as a, it still fits in with the volume, and in, yeah. the volume's still the best volume so far, as long as we don't get severely cock-blocked by the last episode. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we won't. Hopefully when they were working on volume three, they learned how to write an ending. Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, consider my thoughts makes a positive on this one. And for like, I don't, I don't have, you don't have to give me, you have to give me a cue. <laughs> but um, as for me, yeah, uh, as like it's not well, not as great as far as storytelling as uh, as episode uh, ten. I really did enjoy this, but I can't give any predictions as far as for the next episode. I I'm with high power. I want the Bandit Clan. I want Raven. Like no ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah, if this yeah, I, if this I do, want, I do ends, want more. I do want more Raven, but yeah, I just I do don't want more see Raven. that. Raven is awesome. I really if want this more. volume ends with the Bandit Clan, I will be very happy, and that seems reasonable. Because my big issue is, yeah. is like what what dude mentioned, and I think it's been echoed by a lot of us here, is like. The crow has to be resolved in one sh way, shape, or form. Yeah, I hope they don't really kill does. him off. 
and I'll just be happy with like, oh, we got better medicine. Like, I don't want the spring maiden to come in and wave her magic wand in her no. um in her magical girl outfit and make him better. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, que- the the thing is the the question I have is, I mean they they're kind of building Raven up. Are we going to get her? They have to resolve Crow because they've been teasing that. And I wonder if they the, the other question I have is because another thing that would lend credence to the the fight being short actually is. Was this ep- was this volume to build up that monster itself, or was it to build up Ren and Nora? Which I know that's a little bit crack theory because I love them so much. High powers notice a lot of volume as well, and is that is again does that lead to more things after the fight being more important, like Crow, Ren and Nora, things like that, and the, maybe the Bandit Clan, those things being more important than the fight itself. Well, I mean, they did say this volume was going to be mostly just about character development, so you... So, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, is is it just a quick, hey, get Ren, let's kill this Grim, and then we get some development between, you know, him, Ren, you know, him and Nora, and then some, then we get to the masses with Crow? I don't know. I, 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 because here's the other thing, I, I get worried about their fight scenes, and, a, you know, a 20-minute fight scene would be lame, and I don't know if that's what I really want. And they might, might have built that up too much. And I think they actually are building up toward maybe some of the character development between, like I said, maybe Ren and Nora and, and the Bandit Clan and, and resolving Crow instead of the uh, just the fight. Just a thought. Oh, I want Dr. Yeah. Watts also. Yeah, and Watts. In before there's actually more than one Knuckle In before we get actually, <laughs> actually get a 13th episode. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Tumblr. Let's not bring in Tumblr. On that note, let's end. All right. We're shutting it down now. <laughs> So, uh, so so much for a short podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. We had a lot of tangents to go on. Yeah, uh, we did. So uh, final <laughs> plugins. I'm good. I have. I am actually, as of right now, I have a part way edited first episode of an abridged series for Ruby. Yay! Um, I'm doing it because there have been two decently popular Ruby abridged series. Personally, didn't find any of them super funny. Um. Not on the level of some other bridge series that I've seen, and they're both stopped. So if I can make it happen, then then that'll be awesome. It'll be on my YouTube channel, which is just youtubecom slash dude what the heck, um, which should be spelled the same way as you can see here. Um, and uh, I, it's partly recorded, but I realized that my voice is fairly deep, and I cannot do girl voices, so I had to get my fiance and my sister to do the girl voices now. So once I finish the editing, they'll do their recordings. I would love to have it finished before the next podcast, before the ep- last episode is done, uh, comes out, so I can actually fucking plug it and show the guys in the, in, in the Discord and, and the podcast group to let me know how much it sucks and how much I have to change. So that's the only thing I have to plug right now. But I'm excited for that because I hopefully it can actually get it done. And you, High Power? Yeah, no, I'm good. Just, just the oh. usual. Uh, um, no update on Operator Man. Uh, I'm waiting for my editor to get back from. Uh, oh yeah, he's a, he's out of he's out of country, isn't he? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I thought you. Were, I thought oh. it was you. Oh yeah, I I usually do. But uh, yeah, if you like this podcast and you want to hear us talk some more, you can like, comment, and subscribe for all my videos. I do. Uh. Ruby reviews and the occasional movie review when I uh, get out of my basement to see a movie. And, uh, yeah, uh, you can also find me on fanfiction.net at Mediocrity4. Uh, Ruby on Generations just earlier today finished up, or uh, I guess it'll be yesterday by the time this goes up, uh, finished <laughs> its first arc. Um, it's kind of going on a little bit of a hiatus, so I can uh, jump into uh, coursework at school and uh, videos that I have planned for uh, the post volume four fallout that is gonna happen. Uh, I'm already working on two of those videos right now, and uh, they're uh, really ambitious in scope. And I I can't wait to share more of them with of that with uh, you guys. Um, and until then, yeah, uh, I'll also be regularly doing uh, Guardians of Terra on Fiction Press, and uh, yeah, I'm I got a lot on my plate for the next couple months. That you do, dude. That you do. Yeah, you really do. (laughs) I can't let myself get bored.
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, anything else we need to add? Uh, I no, good, I think we're dudes. good. I think we're good. Fun, fun episode, fun, fun podcast. Yes, very yeah. fun. Yes, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad we could do it tonight. And uh, hey, if if if, if something happens with Renor, uh, good or the, I'm gonna have another soapbox for you guys. So hopefully yes. that'll be fun again. <laughs> oh, it, it'll. It, it's always a pleasure. Uh, talk if to I, if I'm done watching, if I'm done watching this show next week, I'm gonna go out with a bang. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And thank you all for listening. Again, uh, give me a like and a subscribe and let me know what you thought of this episode, what you thought of us, uh, what you thought of our commentary, uh, what you think of Socks' shitty puns. And, uh, oh, ow, ow, ow. Uh, and, and if you want to join in yes. on the banter, join us on the Discord. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, fun. yeah, the Discord yes. server is open. I will have a link in the description. Uh, until then, yeah. Thanks for watching.